Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 2023 Pokemon Let's Go Tournament. Uh, I'm Trevaria, and I will be on commentary for this race today, uh, but I'm not in this alone, no. Uh, I'm joined by Vu and Gavin MBD, so uh, how are you doing? Doing pretty well. Hopefully, we'll see a nice race today. Yeah, I'm doing great. It, we've had some great races over the past uh, two days and uh, got even more coming up throughout all of today. And starting off with this one, I'm excited to see what happens. Oh, yeah, definitely very excited. So uh, let's just take a look at today's competitors before we get into the action. Uh, from part one out of round one, uh, with a round one time of 3.19.14, we have Jay Tattles. Uh, who just got a 310 PB a couple of days ago. Um, he's definitely looking poised to take the win today, but his competitors definitely won't go down without a fight. Uh, speaking of those competitors from part two, with a round one time of 325.46, just barely missing the part one cutoff, it's uh, Sheep here. As he has repeatedly pointed out, he's been doing this run for years, but only picked it back up again uh, for the tournament. So I'm excited to see what he can do today. Uh, and last but not least, from part three, with a round one time of 3.37.42, it's Drywall. Really solid time in round one. Uh, again, just barely missing the part two cutoff. Uh, so you definitely don't want to count him out. Uh, yeah, what do you think about our competitors? Yeah, so it will be a very good race today. Um, I think I heard Sheep, Sheep got a, like a good PB like recently. So he's on, on a very like good base coming up for this race. Of course, Jay Tattles has the best time, but this will be everyone's game. Yeah, I know all three of these runners have been grinding and uh, have, you know, put up solid times in the first round and uh, I'm mostly just excited to see uh, how they improve and, uh, as you were mentioning, you know, getting recent PBs, but excited to see what kind of new race PB all of these runners can pull up. Oh, definitely. Very exciting. Very excited for this race, too. We should be, yeah, just about to get into game here. Uh, the one minute countdown is already counting down uh, for our three runners. We're going to be seeing three EV runs today. So, no Pika version in this race. I may be a little bit out of my depth. Well, you've, you have EV experience. Yeah, I have some EV experience, that is true. But I've been mostly playing Pika for the tournament, so... Not no. quite the the amount of knowledge, maybe, that I would have about a Pika, Pika run. That is fine, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you definitely... Definitely know what you're talking about, and uh, luckily, uh, I don't know about you, Vu, but um, EV is what I have the most experience in, so I feel more comfortable having three EV runners on the screen. Yeah, same. Uh, I've been, in terms of, I just own the EV game, <laughs> and so I did one run, like an off offline run, like two days ago. It was pretty badly, but yeah. Nice. <laughs> so the knowledge is there, you know. So. All right, I'm glad that I have two EV runners with me here today. And we're seeing, okay, interesting. Girl one, boy one, and boy two from Sheep. Yeah, oh, Sheep has been talking about picking boy two every time, a couple of times in the last week. Apparently he chooses boy two because he has gray hair in real life. And... Yeah. <laughs> it's, that fits the best. So, some gray hair representation here. I suppose blonde is the closest to <laughs> uh, the blonde child being closest to a, a gray haired adult. <laughs> All right, so the first uh, major point uh, coming up is going to be uh, seeing what kind of EVs each of our runners get. Uh, we won't know until either they check their nature or um, on their first level up, but uh, that can definitely um, impact the run heavily, especially over the first uh, hour or two. Sorry about just setting the options here before they can leave. Definitely want to make sure that you get that tech speed tech speed set to the to the fastest option. 
pretty standard Pokemon stuff. Uh, setting things as fast as possible, turning off movies, which kind of helps a little bit, but still have a lot of cutscenes that we're going to be skipping through. Um, and yeah, now going on to the first catch of the of the game. Yeah, so for, for the EVs, we are looking into any nature possible that is not minus attack, minus speed, or minus special attack. Those three natures being minor, uh, being negative uh, status can impact and will impact on your run, making them unrunnable. Yeah, Eevee is basically a mixed attacker for uh, its stint in the run, so it definitely needs both of its offensive stat to be at least neutral. And then speed just, well, Eevee isn't the fastest, so uh, having high speed or at least not really bad speed helps with uh, outspeeding some of the enemy Pokemon uh, and thus taking less damage because you get attacked less. Uh, of course, it also saves time, uh, potentially, if the opponent doesn't get to move. So I think I've seen a lot of uh, EV runners in this tournament just roll with minus speed and try to get higher experience to compensate for that. Yeah, and I've even seen some uh, risk the minus attack just to avoid resetting. Um, you know, they can't have a backup uh, if that's a neutral nature, um, but not every runner has even created a backup and some will just roll with whatever they have and try to make the most of it. Yeah, the fact that basically only about half of EVs are usually runnable for a PP attempt is a real downside of running EV compared to Pikachu. Of course, there are other upsides to running EV. I'm sure we'll get into later in the run. But having the first portion of the run be impacted so heavily by the starter nature, uh, yeah, you really want to make sure that you come prepared if you do get like a minus special attack nature, for instance. All right, J titles up first. Bashful. Bashful, that's neutral. Quiet, that is plus special attack minus speed. And Lonely, that's an amazing nature for a sheep. Yes. Looks like Drywall is immediately going to load a backup here. Uh, Quiet, I believe, is plus special attack minus speed. Yes. The nature of. Um, Joker Stami in Run One. <laughs> Correct. Uh, yeah, so you know the minus speed it can definitely hurt you, especially in some of the rival fights where uh, you're going to be going up against a Pidgeotto that has Sand Attack. Um, so it's not ideal. It's uh, having that plus special attack would have been nice, but uh, a neutral EV is perfectly capable of uh, getting through the run just fine. Yeah, so on that reset, uh, Drywall lost about 40 seconds, but having the nature, nature like, it is he compensate if you would run the, the minor speed for sure. Yeah, he, uh, he'll now have to care way less about experience. I mean, you do always want to have decent experience, of course, but being like minimum experience won't hurt as much with a neutral EB. So I can definitely respect the choice to to load the backup file here. And J Tiles getting the first accidental encounter of this race uh, with the Pidgey just flying in his path, uh, having not easy to avoid. But we don't want to be running into any encounters on Route One because they are uh, too low level, not worth catching, not going to give much experience. Uh, so it, for now, it will just be all about movement and trying to dodge things. I will also dodging all of the encounters so far. Uh, it's gonna be, be a bit behind now because of the of the backup save, but he definitely has will have multiple opportunities to catch back up, uh, make up for those forty seconds lost. Uh, so we mentioned sheep has the lonely EV. Uh, we will possibly see that come into. Uh, play in this very first fight if we can pull off the two-shot. 
yeah, usually the first rival fight here will be a three turn fight where you'll just hit the Pikachu with tackle over and over again, but plus attack Eevee has the chance to get it in two as long as Pikachu does not go for Growl in turn two. It will always go for uh, Thundershock turn one. And there we go. Goes for Thundershock turn two. Perfect two turn. Saves a turn over the other two. Ooh, j is getting paralyzed. Yeah. yeah so... that... oh, go ahead, Boo. Yeah, that's going to slow him a little bit. That parallel that parallels is, is going to slow his EV, so he's going to always attack after. And he has just to miss, so. But he got through. Yeah. Uh, not only is the speed halved, but also you can get fully paralyzed, thus basically wasting a turn. And of course, the thing that uh, is always the case in, in Let's Go, um, if your status or the enemy Pokemon has a status, then there's a possibility for what we call status lag, basically a delay at the end of a turn where the game waits for the status animation to complete before the next turn begins and that can any can be anywhere between like 0 0.1 seconds and like two seconds of of time loss per turn depending on where the animation is uh, at the end yeah the status like always frustrating but uh, there's not much we can do about it uh, we'll be seeing just about every status throughout this run uh, and uh, but trying to mitigate them as much as possible All right, sheep already done with the Reddit fight here because, of course, he got that two shot. The other two runners on that fight now. Uh, Pikachu would level up from this Reddit just because the rival's Eevee would give one more experience point than the rival's Pikachu in this version. Our runners here will get to see their level up stats at level six, which is why all of them checked the nature in the lab because it's just a little faster and. Really, only only this way you get the option to load the backup safe. Yes. Yeah, so, assuming they don't catch anything before the next uh, trainer battle, we should be able to see where their first AV goes. And it tells to... actually, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to explain AVs a little oh. bit. That um, instead of EVs, that in, which are present in most. Uh, you know, the e, the letter E and the letter V, not the Pokemon EV. Um, the, this game has AVs, which are basically uh, a one point uh, boost to uh, one stat every time you level up. Uh, so these are pre-decided with each Pokemon and it's going to be the same every 10 levels. So the same AV that you get at level uh, 6 is going to be the same AV you get at level 16. So there is some predictability once you can kind of decipher what your AV spread is. Um, but uh, these can make a huge difference if, you know, you get a lot of AVs in attack or special attack or speed. Um, they can really uh, change your strategy and how you approach some upcoming battles. Yeah. Uh, Chief's first AV went to defense there, which isn't all too helpful. Yeah, ideally you want to see it in the offensive stats, special defense for drywall. Uh, Sheep actually won't get to see, uh, sorry, J Tattles won't get to see his AV at level 6 because he is already leveled up from catching a Caterpie on Route 2, which is a nice little thing that you can do if you see one of the bugs on Route 2 because um, you get a newbie bonus to the catch chance before you enter Viridian Forest. So catching a bug on Route 2 before entering Viridian Forest um, has way less risk of a breakout than catching a bug in Viridian Forest with just one controller. And it's interesting you mentioned Sheep got a defense AV because he is minus attack, I mean, minus defense. So that doesn't mean he has a ah. plus defense characteristic, um, which will give a, normally, if you're minus nature in a specific stat, you wouldn't receive any AVs in that stat. Um, but if you have a characteristic in that stat, then you will have an extra, I believe, 10% chance of uh, every level of getting an AV in that stat. Uh, so uh, 
while the defense we're not really looking for you know defensive AVs, um, it will at least uh, you know cut down on his already low defense and maybe help him some survive some trickier fights um, that can be troublesome with low defense. And now everyone picking up and using the lore. Yeah, so we just joined, like in Viridian Forest is the first catching section that we have on the game. We are aiming to catch a few things on here. Uh, mostly both of the bugs, both Carnaby and Widow, and also a Bell Sprout. Um, we do have a very small chance to see Bulbasaur and Pikachu as well. I think Ship already caught his Pikachu, yeah. Drywall is catching one right now. So Pikachu and Bulbasaur, if you see them, good, you go and catch it. It is an extra catch, um, but those are not really mandatory. Now, the two bugs kind of be in Lido, we do really want them because they evolve super quickly in a few levels. And well, we need to get to a point of getting 50 Pokemon for later. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, getting towards that 50 Pokemon goal, being able to do two catches to get six Pokemon uh, registered in your Pokedex is definitely uh, doing things as efficiently as possible, which is a major goal of the catching portion of this run. Yeah, the bugs are just really convenient catches early on. She has hit level 11 actually, but uh, crossed level 10 with the EV and is going to teach double kick here, uh, which will be the move to go for for the Brock fights that is coming up shortly. Pikachu yeah. version would use the Oddish that would be caught on uh, Ratu or in Viridian Forest to just one shot both the Onyx and the Geodude with Absorb. But uh, since the Bellsprout, that is the version exclusive counterpart to Oddish uh, in this game, only has a physical move, and Onyx especially is very physically bulky, uh, it's not quite as optimal to use Bellsprout for the fights. So instead, players are going to use Eevee and just spam double kick basically. Yeah, we have seen some runners that decided to run a minus attack EV, uh, bring in the Bell Sprout also for that fight uh, for some added support. Uh, but it doesn't look like any of the runners will have to do that today. I saw a Frick on Drywall screen. Yeah, I just saw that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep, going for it right now. And uh, the Bulbasaur uh, is always a great catch to, to get it's you know one of the rares it's the rare spawn for this area so it's very uncommon um, but if you can get it and get it at uh, a solid level um, and it can be uh, a very nice bonus catch to add to your total yeah, you can even consider to evolve the uh, bosaur it comes at level seven if it is Lord, which should be the case here. I don't think it has, uh, the lore has expired yet for Drywall, which means it's only seven levels away from evolving. When does Wobbsaw evolve? 16. Yeah, 16. Yeah, that's nine levels. So it's, it's, uh, it's not optimal, but sometimes it can make sense, especially if the Bulbasaur gets some uh, levels from other catches that you do after. I think there is a way that you can, you have the option to keep both, uh, if you already caught Bellsprout, you can keep both um, Bulbasaur and Bellsprout. Bellsprout evolves at 22, so it's a little bit later. We do use Bellsprout a little bit on a few fights. Um, and of course, we want to have like two Pokemon to speed up our catches. Um, but it is an option to keep both in your party. It's going to waste a little bit of time, but if you're planning for a, a specific catch route, for example, thinking about getting Pidgeot and so on, in, in the later stages of the game, it is definitely a good thing to keep. 
Yeah, especially for a race where you want to play things a little bit safer. Typically, uh, having a you know a guaranteed uh, you know two catches uh, off of one Pokemon can be a nice benefit, even if it does take a little bit of uh, time, losing a little bit of time to leveling up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about uh, Bulbasaur also tries to learn two moves on one level up at some mm -hmm. point. Uh, so yeah, it's a little slow, but for the sake of catch route safety, I would say, uh, it can definitely make sense to keep the Bulbasaur in the party here, but looks like Drywall will deposit it. So we won't get to see uh, Ivysaur this time. And uh, let's see, J-Title's heading into the gym, which uh, Sheep has already started. And as Triv mentioned, we're just going to be seeing a lot of double kick uh, to take care of the, these Geo2 dynamics. It's double kick and then one tail whip here to weaken the Onyx enough that it goes down to, do, to two double kicks. We could do hit level 13 somehow, maybe by getting a supersized catch uh, on the way to Brock's gym. You can actually skip the tail whip because double kick even with neutral attack, should be guaranteed to two-shot the Onyx at that point. Alright, Sheep done with Brock. Jet Huddle's now starting the fight. Drywall hitting a red on the way into town. I don't think that was intentional. Let's see. No, doesn't want to catch it. Battle Town Route 2 can be pretty nice for early game experience, but since Drywall has already caught a Bulbasaur and a Pikachu, probably doesn't actually think it's worth to go for the early Rattata. Experience wise, like for Brock, the main thing we want to hit is level 10 on Eevee. Yeah. Of course, if we can get more, it is fine. So sometimes we are going to catch like Rat, Rattata, and also PG over here just to get that X XP to hit level 10. But as all runners are already level 10, I don't think that any of them would go for those. Yeah, uh, it can be beneficial to be, you know, you want to be getting a lot of experience in the early game, especially because um, you don't always know how things are going to go in Mount Moon, catches wise, and you need to be level 15 for the next gym. Uh, so having that, uh, Sometimes having that little extra XP being maybe 11 or level 11 or level 12 going into Mount Moon uh, can be uh, a nice safety net. Yeah, again, it just uh, makes the next section of the run a little more consistent at the expense of um, not getting the quick Radicate or uh, Pidgeotto evolution, but you can catch both of those separately later in the run, which is a little slower than just getting them evolved. But on the other hand, both Radicate and Pidgeotto give a good amount of experience themselves. So uh, many runners have started to go for early Radita specifically also to get the good amount of Radicate experience later. Meanwhile, Sheep catching a snake, another nice optional catch that you can get on Route 3 and Route 4. Yeah, uh, not something you're uh, guaranteed to see by any means, but a nice bonus. Uh, in Pikachu, there's two opportunities that you can see Sandshrew or Mankey on this route. Uh, in Eevee, it's just the Ekans, and uh, we're not going to... Well, most runners would not evolve it. Uh, we did see in one of the recent races that somebody caught a shiny and decided to evolve the Ekans. Um, but typically, that's a little too much, uh, too many levels, so we're just going to box it uh, relatively soon. Yeah, but it's definitely nice. It's just one more Pokemon for the 50 catch requirement. And it also helps with getting the bugs evolved, which is very important. All right, looks like Jade Huddles didn't see a snake. It's just going to enter the Pokemon Center and buy a Magikarp. This is the fastest catch that you can get in the entire run. Just go into the center, 
pay 500 Poké Dollars, Pokemon Dollars, excuse me, uh, and get the catch. Uh, it's going to be level 5, so there's no way you're going to keep that to evolve into Gyarados. But it's just so fast that it, it really isn't worth it to, to skip it just to catch a Magikarp later that you could evolve within one level. Dragon Ball is now on this shopping session that both Gitanos and Sheep are already passed through. Uh, this first um, shopping session, it's it's going to be like a small one because we don't have that many resources to sell and to buy things. But it is super important. A few of those items, like the antidotes, the awakenings, will last to the end of the game. So, well, they yeah. should last to the end of the game. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, yeah, as we saw, you might have noticed Drywall uh, selling some Pokeballs. I believe that's uh, the beginner notes uh, shopping uh, is to sell a little, sell a few of your Pokeballs now, and it allows you to buy um, a little bit of extra resources, um, an extra X attack, some extra status healing items, just to have a little bit more safety uh, going forward. Yeah, I think. The other two runners did not go for that, so they didn't sell anything. They just went in to buy. Uh... All right. It's okay, so let's finish with the first fight. Meanwhile, she was going to do the menu that Jet Hedles already did. Uh, it's going to deposit everything that won't evolve anytime soon. We'll have to hang on to the meta parts. I was going to teach Headbutt. Headbutt is the TM, the gift TM that Brock gives the player for defeating him, which is such a great move to get in EV version because it's a 70 power physical normal type move. So you get the same type attack bonus on top of it. It's going to be an incredibly powerful move for most of the EV section of the run. Yeah, and Sheep being plus attack uh, should be reliably uh, one shotting most everything in Mount Moon, assuming his experience is uh, on track. So far it's looking good. I mean, level 13 already and he haven't, hasn't even caught anything in Mount Moon. Yeah, it's very Speaking of catching, you've seen Jade Turtles get the good cycle on the Dude and uh, get an excellent catch here. Didn't see any other things spawn yet, so no Paris, no Clefairy, which are the other two main things that you want to catch. And uh, also in this, so this basement room that Jay Tiles is in right now is often a, uh, a key catching portion of Mount Moon because there's a very high spawn rate. And also there is the uh, Moonstone that spawns in this room. Um, I don't know if somebody wants to talk about the double Moonstone and how that uh, mechanic works. Yeah, so... Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Bunch you in the chat, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, another benefit of this, like the high spawn rate, uh, you can see sometimes rare Pokemon in this room, such as Chansey. Immediately goes for it. <laughs> I don't know if he just pos deposited before going for this. I, I hope so. I think he still has the Metapod. Well, I guess we'll see what happens here. Ah, okay, doesn't get fast ball. Got a little bit short by the attack. Excellent. Okay. This is a pretty favorable catch. It's by no means guaranteed, even with two great balls and this, uh, the raspberry. But gets it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see how much experience that gives. It was glowing. So. Okay. Yeah. 1.5k. It actually gets Metapod to level 13. Uh, Butterfree at level 13 tries to learn three moves. But since this Metapod reached that level while not already evolved, uh, that will not happen. So that was actually not the worst call to make to immediately catch the Chansey there. Because now you'll be able to just deposit both the Chansey and the Metapod also level 16 on Eevee without any other catches is so good. He could, if he didn't care about catches, he could just move on now. <laughs> it had us finding a Paris also, very important catch. If you didn't get a chancy. <laughs> yeah, the three 
common-ish spawns you're looking for in Mount Moon are uh, Geodude, Paris, and Clefairy. So those are the ones you're typically relying on at getting at the very least. Um, whereas uh, things like Chansey and Clefable and Onyx are uh, rarer spawns uh, that you're unlikely to see, but can be a nice EXP boost, uh, but are also much riskier to catch. Yeah, the catches on the basic three Pokemon here are basically guaranteed if you hit an excellent throw with the one Great Ball and one Pokeball. Whereas, like I said, for uh, Clefable and Chansey, it's favorable, but it's like anywhere between 60 and 80% are likely to stay in the ball. So breakouts are quite common. Another Chansey! What's going on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This tournament in Chansey. <laughs> All right, just check that I was missing Chansey now. We could see Clefables as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see Clefable as well. Uh, should actually be more common than Chansey, at least on the bottom floor. But J Tattles, even though he hasn't seen a Chansey yet, he will have Many more opportunities. Chansey spawns almost everywhere. So, uh, guess we'll see if he, he'll get the chance at a later point. Like maybe on Route 6 or uh, in Mansion. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, later in the game that the Chansey appears, the harder it is going to be to catch. And so, uh, seeing it here in Mount Moon or seeing it on Route 6 is much more preferable because it's uh, going to have a much higher catch rate. Yeah, I tried to catch a chance on Route 17. It didn't go mm -hmm. well. All yeah. my well, I wasted all my Ultra Balls and I had to use Great Balls for the rest of the catches. Oh no. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yeah. Alright, alright, alright. Oh no. Drywall just going in. I don't think he deposited anything, so... Let's go for the Rass. Does not go for the double grades. So this is, oh yeah, this is gonna break out. If this stays in, that'll be like a 10% chance. Yeah. Unfortunate for drywall. Just goes for it again without another. Oh, it's actually about to run away. Okay, oh, yeah, goodbye, Chansey. Is... Oh, okay. That's really sad. But at least that's a glowing Clefairy to make up for. And Sheep getting the, also a Glowing Clefairy at the same time. Only hits a nice though. Ooh, Drywall. Seems to be having some trouble. Yeah, seems to be having some trouble with the, with the motion controls. Okay, I think it's... How many Great Balls does he have left? How many Pokeballs does he have left? Oof. Five and four? Okay, there if we I go. Saw there we go. Um, I did notice that J Tattle's uh, EXP is suffering a little bit. He's still only level 13 heading into the J and J fight. Oh, that is unfortunate. So, do you want to be level 15 for two reasons at this point? One, it makes the fight against Justin James way more consistent. Uh, oof, keep just running head first into a Clefairy that he doesn't need. Uh, the other reason is that. You need to be level 15 in order to be let into Misty's gym. And going to Misty's gym first is faster than, say, doing Nugget Bridge first, which you would need to do if you hadn't hit level 15 at that point. There are a couple of things that could still bail out J Tattles here. For one, he is, of course, going to get a little bit of experience from this fight. So, nah, probably, no, probably won't even hit level 14 from the coughing. Uh, so he'll have to catch something on Route 4 coming out of Mount Moon. There is also a rare candy in Serunian City that you could grab to just increase your level by one. Uh, but it is pretty slow to get because you need to go through four doors, basically. 
to get to it and back to the city. Uh, luckily, JTL is getting the crit on that coughing, so uh, at least for the Jesse and James fight, wasn't punished for being underleveled. Yeah. Let's hope he gets a good leveled Ekans and maybe something like a Psyduck on Red 4. There's a very small chance of seeing the rare Charmander on Red 4, I think. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that, that's only on Red 3. I think it can also spawn on Red 4, which definitely would help in this situation, because every other catch here. Uh, like the Psyduck, like the Spiro, if you catch it, you won't be able to go for the evolution. Uh, there are no Golduck spawns in the game, and Firo does spawn on Rat 10, but it is a notoriously difficult to catch uh, and very much not recommended. So uh, if you go for these catches here to fix your experience, you will be missing out on those evolutions. Actually, Tetris is just on a very low catch count, too. 12. Feels mm -hmm. low. Did he miss something? Besides uh, I don't believe he got Coferi. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Okay, there's an Ekans. That's that's good. Level 12 is a good level. Okay, I don't think nice. that's going to be enough, though. Yeah, possibly if he gets a good experience off of this in one more catch, uh, maybe a glowing rat would be nice. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. The question is, is he going to wait around or is he just going to gonna take the L here and do the rival fight? Okay, blowing side act. Oof, I would Ooh. go for that. Okay, yeah. Turns it out. Yeah. Yes, Rival so is remembering that there is that NPC that gives you free 10 free Pokeballs, which is nice after that uh, Kofari mishap. So... Actually, I didn't know that was there. Yeah, go ahead, Vu. Yeah, uh, entering a little bit on the topic where Let's say that he wouldn't get that Psyduck. So if you're not, the uh, Mrs. Gym requires you to have a level 15 Pokemon. If you don't have it, you do need to do both the rival fights in the Nugget Bridge before going into the gym. Uh, you lose some time on this. Fights get a little bit harder. So ideally, you want to get the 15 into Misty first. There is a way around, but again, it is time loss. Nice yeah. thing that he, he found the side to save this part. Definitely. If you are pretty close to level 15, you can also just, just do the driver fight first and then do Misty to get that nice Starmie experience from the Misty fight, which in turn will make a Nugget Bridge a little bit quicker. But the extra movement that you have to do to pull that off is, of course, time lost to just getting to level 15 beforehand. So J Tattles is now like teaching a lot of moves to his EV. Uh, the one thing that uh, the EV game has going against the, the Pikachu game is that EV learns some pretty good moves. So he learns an electric and water in a fire type move, which are the types of its evolutions on Gen 1. Uh, and that gives it pretty good coverage throughout the EV section. Yeah, these moves are incredibly busted uh, for EV. Uh, the type coverage is amazing. They're all very strong and have amazing extra effects. Like the electric type move Buzzy Buzz always paralyzes the enemy Pokemon. The fire type move Zip, yeah, excuse me. Sissy side. <laughs> I was about to say Zippy Zap for some reason. I'm Pika brained. <laughs> Sissy Slide always burns the opponent, which of course also halves the opponent's attack set. And then Bouncy Bubble acts like G Giga Drain, where it restores half of the damage you deal to the enemy Pokemon uh, for Eevee. So three incredibly powerful and useful moves. Uh, we're going to see a fourth one later on the, in the run, 
But these three and Hatbot are just going to be our, our bread and butter moves here for the next hour or so. And looks like Dolce Tails and Sheep doing some depositing uh, before heading into uh, the Misty fight. Uh, you can get it, uh, you know, do get a decent amount of EXP, especially from that star me. So uh, being able to avoid some level ups can be nice. All right, and Jade is now on the Misty Fat while Sheep is doing the first gym trainer. Uh, Misty Fat, pretty straightforward. You're going to use one X special attack to boost your special attack, of course. <laughs> and then you're just going to use Buzzy Buzz. Uh, Buzzy Buzz will one shot the Psyduck. And then it most, most, most of the time, excuse me, it won't actually one shot the Starmie unless you are pretty high leveled and plus special attack nature. But what it will do is it will paralyze the Starmie. So um, you'll actually outspeed it in the second turn and have no risk of dying. Since Starmie uses Scald, you can get burned here, which you will have to get rid of immediately because not only do you get the damage tick every turn, but also your attack stat is halved while you are burned. So uh, you definitely want to get rid of it. Yeah, but uh, instead of getting the typical water gun Scald, uh, j titles actually got Confusion and then Psy Wave. Ah, I see. Yeah. And that can happen sometimes. Uh, probably just um, has something to do with how the AI predicts its own damage. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it usually goes for the what it does more damage. So Scald if I remember correctly, can do up to 30, but Psywave Psy Wave does maximum 28. So he probably has some uh, some stats that trigger the AI to, to use Psywave. Yeah, it usually ha should happen when the predictive AI role for Scald ends up being lower than the Psywave role, which in this case apparently happened. It's yeah, definitely it's... nice to get the side wave here. Sorry. Uh, it's definitely yeah. nice to get the side wave here because there's no chance of getting burned. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, going off those, you know, AI calcs, I feel like I typically get that the side wave and the confusion when I'm a plus special defense EV. So um, it's possible that JTiles has a lot of special defense AVs. Um, but, you know, the AI is also not. Uh, doesn't act consistently 100% of the time. Yeah. Or as we expect. Yeah, sometimes you can roll crits and then not actually get the crit, which uh, then looks kind of silly because it used a very low damage move or something. And then sometimes it's just does stuff that doesn't fit the expected AI behavior at all. Anyway, uh, Drywall now entering Missy's gym uh, while Sheep is finishing up with the rival fight and going to enter Nugget Bridge where j Tettles is already taking out all of those trainers that all have one single Pokemon. Um, you're probably going to see j Tettles and Sheep going for Headbutt in most of these fights because Headbutt will be enough to knock basically everything out. The exception are going to be the Sand Shrew and the Growlithe, because both of those are weak to water, so the runners are going to use those to heal up using Bouncy Bubble. And that's one of the reasons, that's the reason, for example, J. Talos has a yellow HP right now, and he's not healing, because the fights are super safe, and there are two Pokemon where he can heal off, so he, of the course of the, the bridge, he'll be basically full, if not full. Yeah, having Bouncy Bubble is just super convenient here uh, in this part of the run for EV players. Pikachu does not have that luxury. Uh, Pikachu only gets one move in the Cerulean Center, which is a very strong move and does get used quite a lot in the Pikachu version speed run. But it doesn't heal Pikachu, so um, if you are at low health during this part, you actually have to do a different strat where you use two controllers for the central fights. Uh, 
and let the Oddish knock out the Samshrew, and then you can just use Pikachu's turn to use a potion on it. Get back to green health. Yeah, with Bouncy Bubble, it's not too uncommon for Eevee to go, uh, you know, basically all the way through up to Rock Tunnel and not have to use a potion, um, which can, uh -huh. which is a nice time save. Drywall, I think, just misclicked and used Headbutt on on Psyduck, which means Eevee is now in danger of getting knocked out by Scald. Okay, okay, the burn. Okay, we're fine. Playing it a little close, but uh, not enough burn damage to knock out Eevee, so gonna, uh, we'll have to menu again to heal up, but uh, getting through the yeah. fight is what's important. Oh, I, think in, I think in this case, they will just get the, the heal on the center. Could also do that. Could do that, yes. Uh, if he does have a burn heal, I think just using a potion and the burn heal is faster than going to the center. Especially because you have two reasons to enter the bag in that, uh, in that instance, but yeah, seems to be going for the center here. Meanwhile, Jay Tettles has reached the end of Nugget Bridge, fighting the Rocket Grant. Just gonna use Buzzy Buzz to take care of the Zubat, or potentially use Headbutt I didn't actually see, but it's gonna use uh, Buzzy Buzz to get rid of the coughing. You do need to keep your headbutt PP in mind here. Because uh, you will be using it quite a lot, but you need a couple more until you are able to restore your PP. So uh, you don't want to run out basically until you reach route 10. And a small difference that Jade Hattled opted for the uh, rural <laughs> uh, rocket grunt fight, whereas mm -hmm. Sheep is doing this, the bridge rocket grunt fight, which. Uh, Basically, the difference in scenery is just based on where your character is standing when you initiate that fight. And I think as long as you have one step on the bridge, you're going to the background turns into the bridge. And if you're totally off the bridge, then you have the more grassy area. Oh, yeah, we're, we're seeing it right there. She was just barely with one toe on the bridge and it's the mm -hmm. counted as on the bridge. I usually get the the other battle background there because I never talk to the grunt. I mm. uh, let them talk to me <laughs> since it doesn't actually lose time in this instance. Yeah. As long as you're right next to the grunts uh, so they don't actually walk up to you. Well, neither of the first two runners here opted for a catch on Route 25. There are two Pokemon that you could catch, I guess three, uh, with Venonat and Meowth in Pika version. The Meowth is version, ex uh, sorry, an Eevee version. In Pika version, you don't get the Meowth because it's version exclusive. But uh, I, I did see Venonat spawn on J Tuttle's screen, but it was pretty far away uh, and nothing else spawned that would have been worth catching so j has opted not to catch it there is also a very uh, low chance of getting a squirtle spawn on round 25 but uh, the small size of the grass patch compared with the low spawn rate and the fact that you're just running through without a lure means that we barely ever get to see the rest squirtle here i don't think we've seen one this tournament or maybe i, I just so. yeah so Jaytada saw both a Venonat and a Psyduck, but he already caught a Psyduck. That's why it wouldn't make sense for him to go back. But usually if you do have two Pokemons, different Pokemon spawning over there, uh, it is a very good consideration to just take the detour and go catch those because, well, two catches right off the bat makes that other parts of the run easier because allows you to skip a few months a few Pokemon if you don't find those. Yeah. Um, in general, I would 
Like when I was playing Eevee, I would only really go for the catches if I saw both Venonat and Meowth. I don't think any other catches are worth it outside of the Squirtle, of course. So Psyduck, um, again, at this point, you would really rather catch it at a later point where it's a level away from evolving. And uh, Buzzsprout, you usually already have at this point. And with Pidgey, again, it will spawn one level away from evolving five minutes from now. So it's not super worth it to go for on Route 25. Also, just to answer the question from Phoenix in the chat, uh, we have a neutral EV loaded from a backup for drywall. We have a plus attack EV for sheep. And then uh, another neutral. Jay Shadows had a neutral. Yeah, Jay Shadows also on a neutral EV for uh, just, just got it. <laughs> Didn't have to load a backup. And Drywall had a quiet EV on uh, on the first load, so didn't want to run with the minus speed nature. So J titles and Sheep are pretty close to each other, only you know a handful of seconds movement wise, but uh, and have the same number of catches. But Sheep is three levels higher, which uh, could easily save them some time in uh, the next couple of fights. Yeah, having high experience is really nice, uh, just in general, because the, the stats thresholds are going to be easier to meet for certain one-shot ranges, and also for some uh, speed checks, basically. One of those being the Pidgeotto on the next rival fight, where if you're level 18 and you have neutral speed, you're not guaranteed to outspeed that Pidgeotto. But if you're level 20, for instance, you're always going to outspeed, which is nice because then you don't run the risk of getting pocket sand. Yes, the sand attack is the major risk of running low speed EVs. And, uh, you know, if you get lucky, it's no problem at all. And it, but it feels like more often than not, you lose at least one turn, if not two or three or four. Uh, but Jay Tattles and Sheep uh, both going to lure and head into Route 6, which is the next heavy catching portion. Rawal sees me out on Route 25. Very close to the entrance to that grass patch, so definitely a good catch to go for. Can also be used in a backup strat for the very last fight of the run, because it comes knowing fake out. We'll see if Drywall will end up going for that. So, Route 6. Uh, there's usually two catches that you definitely want to see here in EV version. One is the Vulpix that J Talon's just caught. And the other is the Jigglypuff. Ooh, sheep running into Psyduck. Probably not going to go for that or might end up going for it because he ran into it now. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's going to do. Uh, Jigglypuff is very nice because it evolves by Moonstone. My Moonstone, you always pick up the Moonstone in Mount Moon anyway. And... Uh, Wiggly Tough is the only Moonstone evolution that does not want to learn a move uh, after evolving, unlike Nidoking, Nidoqueen, and Clefable. So it is the optimal Moonstone target. Uh, I think Sheep's Psyduck might have been supersized because uh, he just got, I think, two levels on both his Eevee and Bellsprout off of that Psyduck. Okay. Well, that, that's even better for experience. Uh, and I guess makes it worth to lose that on the gold egg experience. She now going back for the Vulpix. I don't know if he didn't see the one earlier, but definitely wants to go for it here. It has, meanwhile, has entered Vermilion, uh, pulled off the Vermilion skip or Route 6 skip, depending on who you ask. <laughs> and uh, it's going to do the shop in town. This one is a lot bigger than the one in Pewter City. 
where you sell a bunch of stuff, including the nuggets that you picked up, and you also buy a lot more items. 18 Great Balls, a lot of X Special Attacks, X Attacks, Super Potions, Lores, just a whole bunch of items. Yeah, so going forward uh, for the next, you know, all the subsequent catching sections, we're going to be moving away from using Pokeballs on the second player, uh, the second controller, and switching to using double Great Balls to increase that catch rate um, as the Pokemon that we're encountering are going to be um, higher level and harder catches. Yeah, one thing we uh, a novice figure out recently and that changed a lot, a little, a lot on the speed run, is that previously we used to think that if you have, for example, two great balls compared to one great ball and one pokeball, for example, uh, they would have the same catch rate. But after some analysis on the code, uh, we figure out that that's not the case. Uh, if you do use two Great Balls, you do have a higher chance of catching your Pokémon. Uh, the circle just does not reflect the, that difference in, in the catch rate. So it is a good thing, that because now, uh, from now on, we are probably, move, as uh, Gavin mentioned, we are moving towards uh, catching everything with Great Balls or Great Balls in Ultra Balls. Yeah, that discovery about the about the catching mechanics uh, was really huge for the development of the run. Uh, times have since plummeted from I think like a three or three world record in the past to what what do we have now? Two fifty eight. Yeah, a lot so. faster. Yeah, and just also adding wanna... a lot more consistency to the run. And you know, before there being a lot of variance with how many breakouts you're going to get, but now having solid catch percentages and um, a higher odds that we're working with, it makes uh, just makes things a lot more consistent. And it's, yeah. you know, not unheard of to go through a, uh, an entire run without any breakouts. Yeah, it's definitely nice to know, but we are seeing the first Charmander of the run and not in a good way, <laughs> uh, because she sadly hit one of the that six trainers that are the gatekeepers of a million city. You can just walk straight down the middle and avoid both of them, but it is pretty tricky and a very precise uh, skip to pull off. Sheep just had a very interesting Rat 6 in general, uh, walked into both the Psyduck and the Radata by accident and caught them both. So uh, the Radata, if it's lured here, you can keep. It will take four levels to evolve, which isn't ideal, of course, but it is way better than catching it on Rat 2 and trying to keep it. But the side like, yeah, you really just have to get rid of. It's of no use to you. I think he's like level 23 now, which is absurdly high for this point in the game. I also noticed Sheep uh, in his shopping is keeping the fossil. And so has a backup for the end game in case catches get a little bit tight, can revive that fossil and get two Pokemon out of it. It's a neat little backup. It takes quite a while to get the fossil uh, revived because you have to walk into the uh, fossil lab on Cinnabar Island and go to the last room down the hall. And it's, a, it's a little bit of a walk. Uh, so ideally you want to avoid it, but if you get to that point in the run and you don't have any other way of fixing your catch route that wouldn't take an extra fly, maybe, to pull off, then just going for the fossil is a nice little backup. Data is already done with the rival fight on SSN and just picked up Chop Down, which is the equivalent to cut in the original games, so we'll now be able to cut down bushes. Well, Drywall is just starting out on Route 6 here. Mm. Forgot to use the lure before exiting, so uh, used it just as he uh, got onto the route. So we'll see if possible some of these spawns aren't the highest level. That, but the Jigglypuff is level 17, so that one's fine. Yes. Not that the Jigglypuff level is the most important, because you're not going to be evolving it to be a level up. Uh, but higher level, more experience uh, for the catch is always nice. 
Yeah, this was glowing. I think it may have even been supersized because uh, this was not an excellent catch, but it still gave 600 EXP. I'm not so sure about that, though. I do not have the Route 6 experience here memorized. Oh, I think oh, J Tattle's uh, breezed through the Vermilion Skip and uh, you know got through Route Six, but uh, I believe at the very last moment an Ab responded on his screen, and I don't think he noticed it. Yeah, I just saw nice. something yellow spawn. May have been a Psyduck, but it seemed pointier, <laughs> so I think I'm, <laughs> I think it was an Abra. Um, okay, yeah. Abra's another one of those nice optional spawns. If you see them, you go for them. Uh, similarly to Ekans and Meowth earlier. Uh, they can spawn here. They can also still spawn on Route 7 and 8 later. So it's not too late to potentially get one. Uh, in Pikachu, you would definitely want to get it as soon as possible because there's actually use for Kadabra in battle. In Pikachu version, but an Eevee version, it really doesn't matter. As long as you get the catch at some point, you're going to be happy about it. Yeah, okay. Sheep actually already has Weepin' Bell on the rival fight. That okay. That is how overleveled he is at the moment. Yeah, typically you'd be looking at uh, possibly not having Weeping Bell as, you know, until as late as Rock Tunnel. Uh, so having it here is... Uh, you know, yeah, because now it's not going to benefit you too much, but it's nice to have the catch done. Yeah, this is now uh, this poses an interesting uh, party management challenge because you would do a menu. Jay Tattles actually just finished it on Route Nine before doing the fights there, and on that menu you would usually deposit everything that doesn't need to evolve. Uh, but if you deposit the Weepin Bar, which you would like to do because it doesn't need any more levels. You're not going to have any other Pokemon in your party outside of Eevee, so you will be forced to catch the first catch on Route 10 with just one controller, which both makes the catch less consistent and will make it yield less experience. So he'll either have to keep the Radata or just, again, uh, have to take the the loss there, the loss of experience, and just catch something with one controller. Okay, drywall with a slightly shady vermilion skip, but it worked out. <laughs> um, yeah, regarding sheep, I th think I would probably lean towards keeping the rats, even though um, Raticate can be a nice catch because it gives a lot of experience um, yeah. on Route 10. Um, but if you're going to keep one thing, it'd be nice to have something that's going to evolve and benefit from the level ups. Yeah, I think I think in Sheep's uh, situation, I would definitely also keep the Radata because he already is in a very good experience situation. Mm -hmm. He does not need the Radicate EXP. Like, sure, it would be nice on top of that, but it's not something that you would need to go out of your way for. You know, if he really wants, you know, double edge for Kangaskhan. <laughs> I guess so, yes. I mean, again, <laughs> high experience does help. Even if you're already level 23 uh, on the SSM. Yeah, one thing that uh, um, maybe not everyone that knows about the run uh, noticed, but we just skipped the, the Verbidian Gym. And that's something that the Pokemon Let's Go allows you to do. Once you beat Misty, basically the entire map is open to you. So you don't need to go on the gyms on the, each other. And we are propose, uh, on purpose not doing them in order. Because we are going to find better a better route to go through those. Uh, at some point, later in the future, we'll have like better Pokemon with better levels. That will tackle those gyms way easier than if we would do them now. Yes, yeah, uh, skipping the search gym here also has the added bonus of skipping a cutscene that only plays if you go for a search while you're in Vermilion. Like, it, it only plays if you do search as your third uh, gym. 
So delaying Surge's gem to later skips that cutscene entirely. Yeah, so it will be about another hour before we see uh, another gem, another gym fight. Okay, looks like she is depositing the rat, keeping the weakman bell. Uh, I don't agree with that. With that choice, either go, in, in my opinion, of course, either go for the 1C or uh, keep the rat. All right, J. Talon's getting some decent spawns here on Rat 10. There's a bunch of stuff that you want to catch uh, out here. Uh, Spiro, Krabby, both of the Nidorans, and if you don't have it yet, a Radata. And Chansey. <laughs> Chansey can also spawn here, and J. Talon hasn't got it yet, but Rat 10 Chansey is not great. I think it's only slightly above 50% likely to, to be caught with two Great Balls and a Raspberry. And an excellent uh, catch. So uh, it's way worse than going for the Mount Moon Chansey. In general, I would not recommend it on Route 10. You're better off just catching something like the Radicate or Nidorina Nidorino if you really need EXP. And I think Jay Tattles isn't in the best spots in terms of experience. Yeah, kind of just at the you know, minimum that you would like at this point. Um, so uh, hopefully you can get some glowing Pokemon to show up and kind of uh, bump that up a little bit to a comfortable level. Because, yeah, it's still only 21 at this point, which is not, you know, unexpected or anything. But yeah. uh, you'd like it to be a little bit higher before entering Rock Tunnel. Yeah, it's, a, it's a little on the low end. Uh, I usually want to be level 23 before I enter the next fight here in Rock 10. Which is definitely still on the table for Jade Hadles if he gets some good catches here. So both this route that Jade Hadles is in Rock Tunnel are two sections of catches that will probably dictate a lot of your end goals for your catches. At the end of the rock tunnel, we'll, you basically have a plan sorted out for what you need to catch, what you're prioritizing on later routes, because there's like a lot of things that you can catch both on the route 10 and rock tunnel that we want to go for. I think like on Eevee, we don't usually, uh, there are some strats that we could use uh, Nido King, for example, and it would speed up uh, uh, a little bit, but most of the catches here are counting towards the, the goal of catching, having 50 Pokemon registered on the Pokedex. Yeah, there is a strat for EV version where you use Nido King uh, to hide out to make that more consistent. In Pikachu version, it is actually more or less required to catch either of the Nidos here uh, to use as a support Pokemon for that part of the run. But for Eevee, it is optional, and especially if you're if you have high EXP like Sheep does, it's not really necessary to go for the Nidoking King strat because high experience will just enable the Eevee to take care of the hideout battles by itself. Yeah, and I believe, as uh, we mentioned earlier, that uh, with the uh, special move tutor moves that Eevee is getting, it has uh, very wide coverage and uh, uh, doesn't need the... That's why it uh, doesn't need the kind of support that Pikachu needs, which uh, has a much smaller move pool and um, isn't doing much outside of Zippy Zap, Double Kick, and Headbutt. I mean, at this point, it's also going to start thunderbolting. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, it's not. It's not a very diverse move pool. That is true. <laughs> All right, drywall going for the second vermilion skip. We're not seeing it though. It's not <laughs> on my end. Yeah, uh, froze right as uh, it was approaching it, but hopefully got through it unscathed. 
Guess we'll see when the feet goes back up. I'm sure Tech know. is working on it as we speak. Drywall saying in the chat his power just went out. Oh, oh no, oh. Which is uh, unfortunate timing to say. That is really, uh, that is really unfortunate. So the question is, does he have a backup? Yeah, I mean, if, if the power comes back on, uh, you know, the game is still running because it is a switch, and yeah. it will just auto to handheld mode. Um, but yeah, the recording is obviously messed up, and um, the power has to come back on. <laughs> Yeah, that is so unfortunate. So we will keep tabs and try to get dry drywall if everything comes back, uh, get them in as soon as possible. Yeah, losing the race or having to drop out of the race for reasons out of your control is really frustrating. So I definitely hope that the power comes back up as soon as possible for drywall. But let's focus on the runners that we can't see at the moment. Uh, Jay Tuttle's just entered Rock Tunnel again. Uh, like we mentioned, a very important catching section. Uh, this is usually like the make or break part of a run. If you get a good rat 10, good rock tunnel, you know that you're on a good pace. But a lot can go wrong, which obviously we don't hope, uh, or we hope that the runners get everything they're looking for. Don't want to see them struggle. Yeah, so on rock tunnel, I think the main catch that we really really want to see and as early as possible is Raihorn. Raihorn is going to be uh, the Pokemon that we are going to use as a ride Pokemon during this middle section until we get another faster ride Pokemon later. Uh, so as if as early as we get Raihorn the better. And of course we are not going to evolve it right now because that takes too, too many levels but uh, having it as a right Pokemon is super good. It, it makes our movement way faster than if we just were walking. Yeah, in You're addition... Right oh, did that just Go spawn ahead. on your title screen? <laughs> yeah, Rhyhorn is especially important in EV version because you do not have... Uh, a good backup as a right Pokemon. In Pika version, you can go for an early Arcanine evolution. Uh, J Tattles is getting blessed a little bit, getting the rare char. Yeah, love to see that. He's saying. Oh no. It is a pretty difficult catch. You ideally want to see it after you've gotten the Ultra Balls from the Ace Trainer in here. But of course, you can't really choose when that rare char spawns, so now we have to hope for the best of getting trolled a little bit by the attacks here. Yeah, this is kind of a shared characteristics of the Kanto starters is that they like to attack when the uh, circle is getting small, right when you would throw for an excellent. Uh, that is when they like to do their attacks. So you definitely have to time it. Uh, good. Gets that one down at least. Um, it it can be a little tricky. Yeah. Oh, instant right home for sheep. Amazing. Love to see that. Also an Onyx, that's less good. <laughs> Don't catch it. Okay, there we go. Uh, but yeah, Jay Tuttle's just used like eight Great Balls on that catch, which he's going to have to start looking out for his Great Ball count. Uh, you don't want to run out of those. Sheep already got uh, He's catching a, a Cubone now, mm -hmm. and he, he has a right horn on his, his screen. So he's catching Cubone first because Cubone takes four levels to evolve and it can get some use on the XP that Rayhard is going to give. Yeah, uh, good point that uh, Cubone along with Machop and Krabby are uh, catches you want to see, but they do take four levels to evolve each instead of most of our other catches, which only require le one level or so. Um, so getting them early and then being able to get those high EXP mods after them is definitely beneficial. Yeah. 
these three are usually the first ones to be cut from a catch route if you have high uh, catches already, outside of course of uh, Tentacool, which you never want to catch. <laughs> but uh, especially Cubone, Cubone will try to learn a move at level 26 and then also try to learn, I, I believe, Sword Stance on Evolution. So it's extra slow on top of those four levels that it already needs to evolve. Plus, you can still get Tower Cubon in theory, uh, which will only take one level to evolve. Uh, J Titles, as you mentioned with that low Great Ball count, was being extra careful with the Graveler to make sure he gets it in one. And let's see, regular but still glowing, uh, which is a nice uh, level up boost when, as we were talking about his low experience. Yeah. Gets the red evolved. Has a couple of Pokemon in the party that did not need those levels, sadly. Like Weep and Buff Hero, Nidorina. Kirby definitely likes it though. Just two levels of evolving now. So Ship did some menuing here, depositing, depositing one Pokemon. I'm not sure if we would do the menu here, right? Other than just like adding the right one to to be a right Pokemon, would we? Well, there are a couple of things to consider when um, deciding when to party manage in Rock Tunnel. Obviously, you always want to combine multiple things you have to do in a menu. So you don't want to do four separate menus. Instead, just do one big one, ideally. But there are a couple of uh, exceptions. The first one being Rhyhorn. You always want to immediately start riding Rhyhorn because moving fast saves so much time. So. It makes sense to just do it here. Um, and he had that one poke to deposit. So just combining those two things, definitely worth it, I think. All right, looks like Drywall has officially forfeited. At least if the on-screen graphics are to be believed. Unfortunate, but... Uh was playing you know a great race and it was entertaining and definitely appreciate them uh you know giving it a go today and yeah. uh let me just check the rules for the situation just to sure inform our viewers what this means uh because there is a provision for power outages let's just check it really quick Uh, oh, where is it? There we go. Actually, there is no provision for power outages. I mixed that up. There is a provision for games crashing. Mm -hmm. That is probably what I had in mind. Uh Meanwhile, uh, with our two current runners, uh, it does seem like they're getting pretty good luck uh, with spawns uh, through Rock Tunnel. Not having uh, Sheep about to have a full party of uh, with four Pokemon that he's evolving. Um, J Tattle's now getting his Zubat. So, uh, luckily, things are going pretty well, and they're both already at 30 Pokemon, which is a nice sign before even leaving Rock Tunnel. Yeah, the, the only like missing Pokemon, very big Pokemon missing for J-Tattles is Raikard, right? Mm -hmm. Walking during Rock Tunnel. Again, uh, it is about like, I think if you, after you leave Tunnel, about 40% sec, uh, a 40 second loss, time loss, if you don't have a Raikard. Uh, but hopefully he'll see like what before the end of the tunnel. And meanwhile, it looks like Sheep is just has Graveler left, which is a nice position when only being on the second trainer in Rock Tunnel. Yeah, Sheep basically got all of the important catches up front, which is definitely what you want to see here. Though Graveler is a pretty important catch, so... Oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That takes care of that. Sheep with a really, really good rock tunnel. It 
See, J titles luckily getting through Sophia with no problem. Can get either burned and or confused on that fight, which can be frustrating. Um, but Sophia, an important trainer because, as was mentioned earlier, uh, you do get Ultra Balls from her, which will become very important uh, throughout the end game of, or mid game of this run because they are in short supply. Yes, you get these five ones for free, and there are two other pickups that you can get. Uh, a PB route would usually pick up three in Pokemon Tower, but there is another optional pickup of five Ultra Balls in Hideout. It's a little bit of a detour to get there, but it can be worth it if you ha still have a lot of catches to go for, or if you think that you're going to have to go for some difficult catches to make up for uh, a rough catch route. So Jita doesn't see a Raihone in his on the last fight. I heard we can ride Onyx as well, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean... You, you can ride it. <laughs> you definitely can. The question is, should you? And the answer is no. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are a couple of other Pokemon that you can ride, including Snorlax and Starmie. But none of those increase your movement speed. Some of them even decrease the movement speed. So... Uh... <laughs> You really want to only ride the Rhyhorn and the Arcanine or Rapidash. Outside of any percent, there's also Persian that you could potentially ride, but it's not worth going for because you catch me out at such a low level that evolving it isn't worth it. And you're also never going to go for that uh, Persian gift in uh, Vermilion City that is Pika version exclusive. Because that requires five Growlers caught, and that's just super slow. Uh, I did see J-Title is just deposited as Krabby. I don't know if that was on purpose, or if he was just was depositing a lot of other things at the same time and might have just been, you know, kind of in the zone. Um, uh, but uh, hopefully if he does want to evolve that, he remembers to withdraw it. The catch yeah, I mean, looks like he is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, interesting. Or, I guess not. Or, huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Going back uh, and forth. Okay, I see. Wait. Uh, so, if you don't have Rhyhorn, um, you do typically want um, a. A Graveler can be a backup as your kind of partner Pokemon for the next handful of fights. Um, mm -hmm. Basically just using it to buff EV. Um, but ideally you'd have Rhyhorn to, um, as that support. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Jet Hedl's party is just extremely full right now. I mean, who wouldn't even have space for, for the Krabby? But I don't know. He still hasn't marked as planned on his tracker. So I assume he wants to go for it. If he doesn't, he... Well, I guess he could go for a Pidgey on Route 17 that would evolve twice in two levels, but that's not guaranteed to happen, so I don't know. Uh, it's possible he could, since he has the Zubat, which only needs one level, he could, you know, deposit that um, once it's once that's evolved and pick out the Krabby. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, meanwhile, Sheep, unfortunately, hitting an optional. Oh, no. Yeah, I was about to say that the ship CV is already 28 and he thought double edge for it. And he started like double edging everything, but now oh, he's, oh no. he's low HP against the matchup. Okay. Huh. Matchup going for low kick, so uh, interesting. Probably bec because Eevee was so low health. But that's not gonna kill. <laughs> Eevee is super light and low kick scales with uh, the weight of the enemy Pokemon, so even though it was super effective and got the same type of deck bonus, it did next to nothing. The chops in this level range usually have Brick Break, which would have hurt a lot more. Yeah, got, got a little lucky there. Ah, uh, it was that spinner, okay. Yeah, unfortunately to, to hit the optional, but uh, definitely handled it well, like Spider said in chat. 
yeah. And as we was kind of alluding to, that uh, with teaching double edge, it, it can be very beneficial to uh, you know one hit uh, knock out some Pokemon that you otherwise wouldn't or would have to set up on. Uh, but it does uh, obviously have recoil damage, so you do have to monitor your health and be sure that you're not um, put in some dangerous ranges. Luckily for this Meowth, it doesn't hit very hard, so it's pretty safe. Um, but it can be a little bit of an issue where you need to stop and heal a few times, uh, for instance, in Rocket Hideout. And Sebastian, like, pretty safe and if you went into 4 HP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I think that I've only seen that Meowth use Fake Out and Faint, uh, so neither particularly strong. Um, and Sheep now exiting tunnel with 33, uh, so has a few more... Completed catches, but as we saw earlier, J Tiles does have a full party of uh, Pokemon that he's evolving. Yeah. She bears two catches ahead, according to the tracker. And uh, if you believe the 30 second lie of each okay. catch being worth around 30 seconds, then he's a little bit behind now after uh, hitting that optional, but. This race is definitely still very close. There's so much variance yet to come. So, uh, we could see the lead change a bunch of times yet. And now we're going to get to one of the more exciting part, uh, fights in the run on j Tattle's side. <laughs> the metronome fight. Yeah, this is actually the only chance we'll get at enjoying some metronome shenanigans since uh, Cheap's EV knows double edge and thus will one shot the Kamperi. <laughs> Let's see what we get. Lynch, okay. That is the best thing you can see, but also the most boring. <laughs> exactly. Um. And yes, I have seen that if he can, even if it knows double edge, miss the range on uh, Clefairy. I don't know if that's only minus attack, um, but luckily being plus attack, so. Sheep should have no problem. Yeah, I'm pretty sure with double edge it's like... and plus attack, I wouldn't be surprised if that one shot, I think. Yeah. Definitely does, yes, yes. Uh, I'm... <laughs> It's been a while since I've run Eevee, and even longer since I've run Eevee with double edge at that point. But I'm pretty sure it's also guaranteed a neutral attack. Uh, at least I've never missed the one-shot with it. Okay, j Tuttle's just leaving the interactive loading screen that is the second underground passage. <laughs> Could get an Abra now. That's the last chance. Nope. Okay, just a Vulpix and a Pidgeotto. Uh, yeah. He will come across or walk across that route one more time later, but at that point, he really should have his uh, catch route figured out and not need the Abra spawn. So, realistically, that was the last chance to get one. We now have to rely on the things he's already marked as planned. Which... Let me check... Currently does not include the tentacle, so he hasn't had to stoop that low. <laughs> yeah, Charmander has like a, a extra catch helps out a lot, both yeah. with not having the right horn because the catch for right horn he could replace it with uh, the one of the, with Charmander, and he got a plus on Charminion. Um, yeah. Uh, something I don't think we mentioned is that Jay Tattles uh, just taught Glitzy Glow, uh, which is the last move we'll be teaching Eevee, uh, a psychic type move that also sets up a light screen, which will uh, 
be very useful as we're going to be fighting a lot of po poison Pokemon uh, over the next, you know, uh, 15 or so minutes. Yeah, uh, the beginner notes would usually teach the tutor over uh, Susie slide, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which just means that you'll have a little bit of an easier time defeating that Radicate that Jade Heddles just uh, defeated. Because you'll still be able to use that Paralyze into Headbutt slash Double Edge strat. Uh, but there's a little bit of a quicker strat for specifically the Giovanni 1 fight in Hideout where you need to use Sizzly Slides. So uh, the advanced notes teach Litsiglo over Buzzy Buzz instead. Yeah, and the downside is that you, normally you would Buzzy Buzz, I believe, on uh, Jesse's Arbok to uh, lower its speed and, uh, you know, uh, possibly have it fully paralyzed, but that would uh, allows you a little extra flexibility and not getting poison jabbed twice. Uh, and possibly getting knocked out that way. But uh, it's something we sacrifice for um, having that sizzly slide, making Giovanni faster. Yeah, for all the beginner notes, it actually says, do not teach double edge ever. <laughs> and it is not considered, well, double edge, as the name of the, the move says, is a double edge sword. Like, super powerful, but you get the recoil that if you're not aware of how much damage you may take on the next fight, it could lead into you losing fights and having to go back and so on. Uh, and also, the beginner notes does go for boom strats for Giovanni, which are interesting. I don't see, I don't think we'll see, the, see it, but basically, on Giovanni, when we get there, I'll mention it a little bit more. Yeah, J. Titles does have the Graveler in his party, so uh, he could pull it out, but uh, we'll see. Like you said, one uh, once we get there, we'll see what happens. Um, this rocket hideout section is uh, kind of a, uh, I would say, one of the trickier sections and uh, of the run in terms of thinking on the fly and really uh, is where your experience with the game comes into play in terms of having to improvise and adapt to, um, you know, what your HP is at, whether you have double edge or don't have double edge, whether you have, you know, better attack or special attack. Um, what your, you know, partner Pokemon is, whether that be Rhyhorn or Nidoking or Graveler, and uh, trying to do it uh, as optimally as possible, having as few, you know, turns as possible, trying to, you know, reduce healing as much as possible. It can definitely, um, if you're not as experienced with this area, it can definitely add in a lot of extra time to your run. And um, meanwhile, if your the top runners are, uh, can definitely you know, shave off more turns than an average uh, player might. And then wow. we also get to play as Eevee. <laughs> yes, I love this, casually. <laughs> Shaman only happens the one time. Yeah. Also shame that you have to climb on a rolling chair to get there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not the greatest lesson. <laughs> climb on a rolling chair to turn to your favorite Pokemon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> climb on a rolling chair, open up mysterious vents. Yeah. Put your animal in the vent. All great lessons. Good idea. All right, so j is picking up the lift key, and uh, once he navigates his way back to um, 
where Jesse and James are standing, will be going through a, a gauntlet of three um, mini boss fights uh, where they can be a little dangerous. Um, you know, you can definitely face, it's possible for Eevee to faint, you know, especially if you get double targeted. Um, so it can be a critical point in the run. Yeah, these, this trio of fights is very important. And because you use Eevee for this, for all three fights in Eevee version, having a good Eevee can really make a, a huge difference here. Also having high experience like Sheep. So, very interested to see how the three fights are going to look like for the two runners here. Yeah, unfortunately for Sheep, the won't be able to use the attack, his high attack stats uh, during these fights, as we'll be just using yeah. special moves. Yeah, plus attack EV uh, really doesn't give you any benefits from this point onward, because you mainly use Glitzy Glow. Actually, I think you only use Glitzy Glow outside of the uh, Giovanni fight here. And even then, a high stat doesn't really give you any benefits, since you're always... Well, I guess... Never mind, I'm gonna go back on that a little bit. There is a risky strat if you are high leveled and have good attack where you can actually try to one shot this, uh, uh, the Persian with double edge, but it's, it is definitely not race safe. So I don't expect Sheep to go for that. But he meets the requirements. He, he has 71 attack at level 30. So yeah. he does beat the requirements. It is true, but you, it's so easy to die to a slash crit and the recoil, uh, so... Especially again, being minus defense. Yeah, not recommended with Naughty, I think. Uh, uh, but he should be able to comfortably two-shot with Sizzly Slide, um, at the least, which for some EVs is not guaranteed. Yeah, that should be more than guaranteed. Uh, meanwhile, J Titles uh, is seeing, as I mentioned, having to do some adaptation as the grappler went down. Um, not the end of the world, but just uh, adds a little extra time to having to swap in another Pokemon. And it is definitely preferable to having the EV faint here. Because right. it gets targeted by both uh, Arbok and the Weezing. Question is, does he have to revive the Graveler now? Does he need it for Archer? Um, something he could do would be to put the Gold Bat in slot 2 and mm. use that basically just as you know a target. Uh, yeah. Because you're just going to be buffing Eevee. You really need just you just need a Pokemon that can survive a hit or two uh, on on the Archer fight. So depending on what he has in slot three, he may just be able to go for it. Yeah, if it's the Machop, I might be a little bit worried as that thing is pretty fragile. Mm. Um, True. And you definitely don't want it to fade be, uh, faint because you still want it to evolve. So I guess you do get the free heal on the pad in Pokemon Tower. Mm -hmm. So it would really only lose out on the Giovanni one experience if it dies on Archer. It is still level, it just turned level 25 though. So I think okay. any, any experience uh, from battles that it can get uh, would be beneficial. Oh, definitely. That is extremely low levels. Okay, now is <laughs> withdrawing the Krabby, just doing an extra menu. Which, yeah, also using Revive and Graveler, probably also going to heal it to full. Yeah, there we go. That was the first Revive used, so I probably won't need to go for the max Revive that is hidden in the corner in this room. But could definitely consider it to, uh, you know, be safe. In case something else bad happens, which we never want to see, but it can. This game does like to troll us. 
as runners, so... <laughs> Maybe you want to consider picking up the Max Revive. Uh, meanwhile, Sheep, uh, using the double edge to... Uh, I imagine using the double edge to his advantage in the previous fights, because now he is only uh, just the one fight behind. Yeah, that is also because Jay Tattle's got a couple of evolutions. Uh, so both mm, of the runners sure. are now even on catches. Uh, it's still very close. Jay Tattle's just defeating the first Pokemon on Archer and Sheep not down with Jesse and James. So we'll be right on Jay Tattle's heels. It doesn't need to menu apparently, it just went right into the fight. So it will stay this close. Both runners on the same fight. We love mm -hmm. to see it. Yeah, okay. I was uh, checking Sheep's screen, but yeah, now he's bringing out the second controller. Um, it might be a little bit risky to have, you know, both of the Pokemon not at full health, uh, but there is some flexibility on this fight to have one healing turn. Yeah. Uh, Usually, yeah, you would only go into this fight without healing if maybe one of the Pokemon is damaged because you can just use turn one of the fight to heal that Pokemon back up. Uh, since Eevee's never gonna one shot the Weezing with a plus two Glitzy Glow, so it doesn't really matter if you use the X special attack turn one or turn two. But if both are damaged, yeah. I will say if your plus attack and high enough level. I have one shot the Weezing one time, huh. so it is possible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you definitely love to see it. A crit would also do the trick, but yeah. uh, if you're already at plus two. Uh, meanwhile, we're seeing J-Tiles on that Persian, which uh, seeing it do a lot of damage, but now that it has the burn, it's kind of nerfed it a bit. Yeah, I actually think he may not have needed to heal there. Uh, I can definitely get... I can definitely understand the impulse, but uh, crits are also half damage when burned, so I don't think the slash necessarily would have killed it, but I didn't see the exact uh, HP number, I just saw the health bar before he healed it back up again. Okay, moment of truth. Is Sheep gonna go for the super risky strat? <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Probably not, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's just X attack and double edge, I believe. Yeah. No, because as he said, that is much more sensible. Yeah. And should be fine not to heal, uh, even with minus defense here. Yep, hanging on just fine. And I am now remembering that he did have the plus defense characteristic, so he might have gotten some yeah. ABs to kind of mitigate that deficit. All right, J Tattle's now leaving. Let's see if he's gonna pick up the extra ultra balls. Has a couple of catches. Yeah, okay, goes for it. Uh, definitely has a couple of catches still to go for here. Four, five, six catches with, depending on if everything spawns. He definitely could end up having to go for like a Tentacool or Magmar Ditto Tangela in the late game. Now we're going to pick up a uh, fly or sky dash, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, yeah. sky dash. Yeah. <laughs> not as whimsical as some of the other names. True, but also not as uh, boring as strong push. <laughs> yes. Which will always be pushy push in my head. Of course. <laughs> uh, sheep also going for the ultra balls. Yeah, it's a good backup. You can also then decide to skip the three Ultra Ball pickup that is in tower, just to skip those couple of seconds that the item pickup jingle plays. 
which if you just need like two extra ultra balls, fair enough. Was uh, J Tattles the one that was low on great balls too? Yes. Okay, so could have been beneficial to maybe pick up those twenty ultra balls outside. I mean, twenty great balls um, yeah. from the NPC. Yeah. Maybe I'm not sure what his great ball count ended up as after Rock Tunnel. But considering he used like eight on the rare char, probably not the best. Yeah, so if he gets all the the ultras that he can get from now on, like he got five and then there are three more here, and then I think there's more two later. So sums up as ten, if I'm not mistaken. But then he has six catches to do, so at a few of those get there is the star me that the stereo that is going to be like just one but he'll probably have to use like pokeballs or one or two great balls if he has left so it will be close definitely yeah you really only need to pick up the 20 extra great balls if you're like super low like if you only had like two or three great balls at this point you probably should consider going for it but if you have like eight or so great balls left that will be more than enough since you're only ever going to be using one for each of the catches that you still have to go for and for the water catches not even that because uh, you can only catch with one controller okay both of the runners getting the good spinner pattern here on uh i forget which numbers the flaws are the the one before the heel pad or Maybe. I don't know. I think four and then heel pad is five and then okay. the, the ghost floor is six. I'm like moderately confident in that. <laughs> Not completely confident. Um, over on the sheep side, I was wondering if maybe, I think with this high attack and this high level, he probably could have just gone for sizzly slide on these haunters, um, which hmm. um, can save you the uh, turnarounds that you typically have at this time, and the light screen text. See, that's one of those things that I wasn't aware of for EV runs. Oh no, <laughs> not the like... gallbad in the middle of the <laughs> in the middle of the uh, corridor there. Uh, yeah, I don't know the exact ranges on the sizzly slide, but uh, usually if I'm, you know, level thirty and plus attack, I feel pretty confident going for them. All right. Um, meanwhile, I saw, I saw Jay Tattles got a ghastly right before entering the cutscene, which um, you always hate to see. Yeah, unfortunate to have that despawn. Luckily, it hasn't ever happened to me where it just spawns right before you hit the trigger. Okay, there we go. That's the ghastly. I feel like Jay Tattles was considering going for the Haunter, <laughs> which is not great. Uh, <laughs> ah, perfect. He also gets a convenient ghastly spawn. I mean, he does need a ride Pokemon, and the Haunter is there. <laughs> oh. He doesn't hit the circle. This Ghastly will break out for me, but let's hope it stays in for him. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. A little risky going for the double greats, um, but... Yeah. Uh, Managed to stay in. Not hitting... Yeah, you could... You, you should consider using the Ultra Ball on the first controller here, uh, because... Yeah, if that happens, what just happened with Sheep, uh, not hitting the circle at all with just double Great Balls, it's not a great catch chance. Yeah, meanwhile, if you do Ultra Greats, and even if you miss the circle, I think it's still above an 80%. All right, Jet Head is now going into change J3. And sheep right behind him. And, and just remember, Jet Hattles doesn't have Rhyhorn, so he's gonna lose a bunch of time yet going to Route 16 and 17 and trying to catch a ponytail over there where sheep will just be able to keep riding the Rhyhorn. So this is even closer than it already looks.
Hmm. Eevee getting poisoned. Don't want to see that. Yeah, Dark Pulse would have just killed the Eevee, I think, if it had hit it instead of Graveler. I believe the advanced notes just have a line that says, don't get unlucky yep. for this fight. There's just so much that can go wrong. Uh, so far, j Titles has had a, a decent fight. Uh, Liquid looks like he's going to make it out alive, and it um, doesn't matter what status Eevee leaves this fight in because uh, this is the final fight for Eevee. Yeah. So well, that's she's that's paralyzed. paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> and the immediate glare on my horn, that doesn't matter, luckily. I feel like the best thing that can happen, especially in the EV version, is um, Arbok going for Glare on Rhyhorn and Weezing going for Toxic on Rhyhorn in the same turn. Because mm -hmm. then neither of your Pokemon will take damage and the Paralysis will come out first because Arbok is faster. And it just doesn't matter if Rhyhorn is paralyzed or not. So uh, yeah, that's definitely the best opener you want to see out of JJ 2 and 3. All right, uh, Jetalos picked up the Poke Flute. We now fly over to Celadon. And she was also through the fight, so we'll be right behind him doing the very same thing. Uh, you want to have Ghastly in slot one for this upcoming uh, fight, quote unquote. Uh, yeah, yeah the Ghastly. Oh, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, the idea for Gasly is that it is the fastest Pokemon that we currently have, which makes avoid uh, running from Snorlax coming right up uh, the best Pokemon to do so. Yeah, uh, additionally, I didn't, I never thought about this until one of my other commentaries. Somebody pointed out that, uh, at least in most of the mainline games, um, of the modern mainline games, Ghost Pokemon can run away from anything, um, regardless of their speed. Um, it's like kind of like a passive ability, which didn't even consider to, you know, I didn't even consider that. I just assumed it was just because of the speed thing. I don't know if that mechanic is in this game, given that there aren't abilities and some other features, but um, I don't know how you would confirm that either. Yeah, the, the thing that, you know, is like, for example, if you have Gofitel or the other side that has Shadow... Uh, Shadow right. Technics, the ability, ghost types are immune to it, they can run away or switch out in battle, uh, but I'm not sure regarding like Gen 1 and specifically Let's Go that it is a mix of a new generation games and old generation games. Yeah. Oh, it's so painful to see Jade Headless just walk down Route 16. <laughs> <sighs> Hopefully it gets the quick ponytail. Yeah, just the first spawn, ideally. Doesn't even have to <laughs> go into the corner to this month, right? Uh, <laughs> I probably would have just done that out of habit. Yeah, I think one time mm. I went for it, didn't do the skip, or didn't go behind the Pokeball. <laughs> so I was just confident, like, oh, I don't have a ride. And then I ended up hitting the trainer anyway. Uh -huh. and, and now every time I uh, just do the movement anyway, just in case. Yeah, that, that trainer, that skip sucks to mess up because you don't have a main Pokemon at this point. Uh, usually all of the Pokemon you have in your party are pretty weak because they're unevolved. So hitting a, an optional trainer fight on this route sucks. You don't want to see it. Also, j Tattles, of course, the first two spawns he gets are Doduo and Psyduck, so no pony yet. Is that an Eevee? Right. Yeah, that's an yeah. Eevee. <laughs> uh, well, that's but... a little bit of a meme spawn in Eevee version. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the pony, there we go. Yeah, I usually don't get, you know, I stay pretty calm and don't get too mad at this game, but uh, when I do see an Eevee, when I desperately need Pokemon on Route 17, that's <laughs> when I, I think I get the most frustrated. <laughs>
Nice things I've catch here. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to see a bunch of evolutions here. Uh, both Krabbies. And then also Ghastly for J Tuttles. Which I guess this is a good moment to talk about the stakes of this race. Since this is a lower bracket race, uh, you really want to win to stay in the tournament because you can get eliminated here. Now, since Drywall had to forfeit, uh, the guaranteed elimination slot has already been filled. But whoever is the runner up here will have to have a good time because the only way to stay in the tournament if you don't win your race is by having one of the top two times of any other runner in the lower bracket, which currently, if you want to stay in the lower brackets and not get eliminated, you need to beat a 31737 by Zimlik. So that's a pretty good time considering that two of our winners so far have gotten a worse time than that. Um, yeah, that's what both these runners are trying to beat if they can't beat each other. Sorry, if they can't beat each other. Uh, just a quick side note, Sheep did see another e did see an EV also. <laughs> that's not that's not useful. No. Um Beatrice, maybe you can speak a little bit since you are one of the competitors, uh, a little bit to the mindset of uh, I know you're in the upper bracket, but still uh, you know, the mindset of the race and um, kind of uh, the pressure of trying to put up a good time, uh, even if you're you know, the pressure of trying to win, but also trying to put up a good time in case you don't win. Well, you kind of have to balance taking risks with uh just doing the safe thing to guarantee that you get the race over the line. I honestly haven't really been in that situation since my round two race is uh, going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and in round one, it was really only about, you know, getting a decent time. Um, so I didn't really feel incentivized to to go for risky plays at all. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a lot of pressure on you, especially if you're up against elimination here in the lower bracket, you really uh, I think feel that pressure and uh, the runners are going to have to deal with that and not let it get to them because it can definitely lead to mistakes if you're playing too cautiously maybe or maybe get a little bit too nervous and, and misclick or something like that. Um. Looks like in the chat, they're speculating that both of them are on pace to beat uh, Zimlux time, or possibly even PP for sheep. Um, so, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, especially in the late game uh, with the Giambani fight, the gym leader fight, and also the um, Elite Four if they, like you said, opt for some of those riskier strats. Um, oh, um, and. Yeah, sorry, I got distracted for a minute because I thought Sheep was about to ride the Haunter because uh, he said it as <laughs> his ride Pokemon. <laughs> um, Probably yeah. just paying respects to the meme. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they are pushing up against that Zimlik time. Um, whether oh. they are trying to get it. Okay. Checking in on Eevee. <laughs> <laughs> so, J-Tarot's waited a little bit on the last grass because he had marked PG, but he couldn't find a PG, so he went for Pidgeotto that's going to evolve into Pidgeot, and all of that is just so they avoid Tentacle. If he wouldn't, if he didn't find that, he would probably go for Tentacle on the water, which is not a good catch. One controller only. Things can go wrong. Especially Which since I believe he's out of great Ultra Balls now. Oh no, I, oh, I didn't even see, catch that. Uh, looking at the catches, he only has Dayu and Coughing Plant at the moment, and it should work out like that. So, no Tentacle, no Firestone Evo.
But in the chat says that JT probably never even switched to Ultra Bars. Interesting. Oh, that might make sense. Yeah. Um. Which, in that case, probably means that he just could have skipped the hideout Ultra Balls, but, you know, hindsight. Yeah. Just has extra safety in case uh, it does get trolled a little bit by the star, star you. Keep going back right there. Oh, nice, Chancy. Oof, that was close. That was so close. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> when the lore uh, proc, I was so sure that he had hit that optional. Oof. So yeah, those three or three out of four out of those optionals right there uh, have a very short line of sight, so you can get pretty close to them pretty safely. The only one that has a slightly longer line of sight is the one that's on the road, basically. And they overlook the entire road. So as long as you stay in the grass, you're safe from them at least. All right, Jet Hells on the road, hitting a magic carp. <laughs> looking for a star, you're not looking for a tentacle. There is the star. We'll go back for it. Definitely a good thing. You don't want to just ignore a star, you, because you can't end up just going the entire route. Whoa, okay. Whoa. 1124. What the heck? That is uh, such a high CP value. Yeah, I will be interested to see what that uh, what that level of stats look like because uh, that's almost as high as you can get, I believe. Uh, yeah, let me just double check what the highest. I believe it's like just a bit higher, 1160 maybe. I think it's 1171. 1171. Yeah, thanks, Phoenix, in the chat, and also thanks, Boo. Uh, yeah, so it could have gone higher, but this is I better than that... you could ever expect, honestly, in a race setting. I think that secure is like not having like super bad special attack or super bad speed. Uh, well, bad. it should. It definitely makes it much more likely that you have at least decent special attack and speed, but we have seen. 1100 CP plus stars with uh, like fantastic 31 IV attack and like defense or something. And then you still end up having something like 116 special attack at 46 or something. So very mediocre special attack, which we don't want to see. We just want to see good special attack, good speed. Okay, let's see what sheep gets here. Also getting a glowing star. Okay, 10, 1086, that is much more usual, slightly above yeah. average still. Gets a breakout here, unfortunate. Yeah, just barely missed the excellent on that throw. Sivaraz makes the chances of getting the catch here pretty good, even oof. Mm. Even if you don't hit the circle, don't know if he ever rest the first time around as well. But with the gate, it should be guaranteed. Yeah, there we go. And I think that just leaves coughing for both of our runners. I believe so. In terms of actual catches. Yeah, looking at the tracker. Looks like it. That's what we love to see. No one has to go for Tentacool. No one has to go for any late backup catches like the Magmar. Or fossil. All right, let's let's see. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> good special attack. Uh, good speed. Good enough, definitely. May not be good enough to outspeed the Rav of Five Pidgeot, sadly. Mm -hmm. But that's like just a little bit of a bonus thing. Definitely enough to outspeed everything in Blaine's Gem. So uh, that's all you want out of the speed set, really. It's enough speed, yes. Uh, <laughs> but special text look, looks good, just not amazing. Yeah, yeah, I think we should be pretty happy with that star. The good thing is that that means the star will probably be very bulky. Oof, okay. Beep's special attack, not quite as good, but it has better speed. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a fine star me on Cheap's end. Sadly, somehow better speed than what J Tattles has, but. The special attack is definitely worse. Like this would probably be 116 at 46. Which is fine. 
Um, good enough, for sure. Shouldn't get in trouble for the star. Okay, Jadis got the coughing and is done with this catch route. We'll only have to evolve uh, the Pokemon that haven't evolved yet and then get the two gift Pokemon in Saffron City to get to the 50. Meanwhile, 115 at 45. Okay, so probably a little bit higher than 116 at 46. But yeah, that is good. Special attack for sheep. And that's looking, the coughing. Looking at sets for both uh, both Starmies, I think J Tadels is super, super ha happy with its Starmie. Uh, it shouldn't have any problem. It's probably just done outspeeding Raichu because it's like 140, but has good enough special attack to hit most of the ranges, has incredible speed to outspeed everything that he really needs to. Keeping the opposite side, he may face a few ranges during the run with its timing. Yeah, luckily some of those ranges can just be uh, covered by using safety strats. Uh, but some of those you definitely don't want to see. I don't think you'll have like hydro pump ranges on top of, you know, the hydro pump accuracy. I think they are, the special attack should be good enough. But there are a couple of other things that could be ranges with this. Last but certainly not least, the psychic range on Dragonite. All right, Jay Tuttle's now on Ted. This is a surprisingly risky fight because Ted has an electrode, and if that goes for Thunderbolt on Starmie, which luckily it didn't here, uh, it can do a lot of damage. If you have low special defense, it can straight up kill you on a high roll. Uh, it can also crit you or paralyze you, so you don't want to see it. Ideally, it just goes for Rapidash. Yeah, or you just do it like sheep. <laughs> um. The other extra benefit of it not hitting uh, Starmie and hitting Rapidash instead is that you can skip the bed heal, uh, yeah. which will save you a few seconds because it doesn't really matter what Rapidash's health is like at the moment. Yeah, not at all, actually. But Sheep went for the slightly safer strat where you use the duo as your second Pokemon here. Um, the duo will always bait the Electro to go for Thunderbolt on it. So uh, makes the fight a lot safer, but it will also always die to Thunderbolt. So you always have to go for the bad heal since that Dodo will need to uh, be alive, both to evolve and then also to be used on the blue fight potentially. If you have Dodrio and you want to use it for blue, you will have to swap it into the second slot at some point anyway. And as a safety strat, might as well do it before Ted. So Jay Tattles got the the Firestone, but he didn't actually mark Nine Tails. This is like a backup. If I miss something, let's you just use this Firestone or something. Yeah, may not have. Hmm. It could be. I don't know. Just safety, if like. He accidentally miscounted, you know, in a race, it doesn't hurt to be extra safe. Yeah, for sure. Sheep just had two very risky, very close spinner passes. Yeah. So it was much safer. I was uh, a little nervous there. And that trainer does have an Electabuzz, which uh, can be a little scary. Yeah, the first trainer has three coughings, I believe, which just takes sure. a long time just because it's three Pokemon. So uh, you don't want to hit those optionals. And now both of our runners are going into Blaine's gym, literally back to back. We do see that Sheep is a little behind on the catch count, just uh, having to evolve a few more Pokemon. And Jay Tattles is already uh, only has one more Pokemon to evolve. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, as you said, neck and neck uh, in placement in the route wise. 
And as we've seen during this tournament, these questions are not guaranteed. <laughs> so uh, you want to menu carefully to make sure, because every wrong answer is another optional. Yeah, she seems to be taking it very slowly here, just wanting to make sure to get the answers right. Sadly, only for the first and last option, you can mash A. Uh, every other option you need to actually, or every other question, you actually need to select a different answer than the one that the cursor is set to. She went for the last op last answer on the last question, because yeah. <laughs> last question, you can answer whatever you want to. Yeah, similarly, on the uh, next to last question, both no and what's that are considered correct answers. So you can go for either. All right, so Blaine, um, one of two things can happen here. Either, which happens most of the time, Magma goes for Confuse Ray, which happened to both of, both of our runners. Uh, it can just kind of randomly decide to go for Flamethrower turn one, which lets you skip healing the confusion. But oh no. Ooh, both burn. I see a burn. Oh, both. Only side for Yeah. Sure. That's so bad. RNG gods are treating both runners the same way. But they just failed on the stormy part, right? Oh, wow. Well, the good thing is both runners are at speed. Uh, everything on Blaine's team, so even with the burn, they should be in really no danger at all of dying here. But they will have to heal immediately after the fight to get rid of the burn, which is slightly less optimal than just doing the menu after search, since you want to teach Thunderbolt after search anyway. So it would usually make sense to heal after search in that very same menu. But if you get burned, got to do the heal sooner. Hmm. Sheep getting some harsh status lag on that last uh, mm -hmm. on that nine tails. Um, yeah, and the, the burn doesn't really matter in terms of like putting you in danger of dying on surge. It's just the time loss of uh, the chip damage, uh, the text box, the status lag, all of that adds up to, uh, you know, enough time that you just want to take care of the burn as soon as possible. And here's where the rival congratulates us for completing the seventh gym. So that must mean we're ready for Viridian. Of course. Uh, but in reality, we that's only our third gym. And so we will be doing kind of a gauntlet at the moment of different gym battles uh, before heading into Selfco. Yeah, we basically just clean up those gyms that we... Uh... <laughs> skipped earlier. Still need those badges to be able to reach uh, the Pokemon League. But yeah, since Gavin mentioned, uh, because we are way over leveled here and Sarmi is so strong, it's just very easy to get through these fights. You just spam Skull on Surge, spam Psychic on Erika. Uh, you shouldn't run into any trouble. And unlike the other Kanto games, uh, they made the cans easy. Uh, I would, you know, I thought about playing it up, but I feel like that's been enough time done enough times during this <laughs> tournament that yeah. uh, the cans are just always the uh, those two in the middle at the very top, and uh, you don't have to worry about RNG. And everyone is so thankful for that. Yes, it was just. Never a good puzzle to begin with, no. when it was randomized. Um, it can be a little... I don't know. I'm still a little nervous in this gym because some of these trainers do have pretty long vision. And if you take your turns a little too closely, you can get spotted. Um, but generally, you're getting through here um, unscathed.
So, leaving search for later. That's pretty, a pretty good idea, right? So, rem uh, remembering the time where we left SSN, like our EV was around level 20, 20 something. Now we have a level 45 starting to go against Surge. So, basically, it doesn't matter that the Latex is effect super effective on water, we just alt speed and alt damage everything. <laughs> yeah. Right? And if you really wouldn't have had a good way of dealing with anything in this fight, like, yeah, sure, you would have had Sissy Slide for the Magnemite, but what are you going to do about that Raichu at level 20, 21, or whatever? So... It's really a good thing that we are able to postpone search up yeah. until this point in the run. I want to say I heard that early on uh, in this game's, like, speedrun life that they would fight that rocket grunt outside of the Cerulean house to get Dig. So you could okay. use Dig on this fight. Um, but that's obviously that when they were using Eevee on this fight and doing uh, Surge early. But obviously now things are routed much more uh, quickly and don't need to don't need to take care of that fight early. Yeah, yeah. This way, just much quicker. Well, uh, Sheep just teaching Thunderbolt right now. Again, had to do the heal earlier, so uh, that's really all you can do at this point. And then also gonna fly to Cerulean, uh, excuse me, Celadon, where uh, J. Tattles is already in Erica's gym. Seems to be pulling ahead a little bit here. Uh, or I guess, yeah, Sheep just got an evolution, so this is just the, the catch count difference manifesting. Oh, she was also on physical. That's a very good point uh, from Phoenix in the chat. Mm. Didn't actually know that. Yeah, the difference between physical and uh, digital versions of the game, um, the loads are just longer on physical because it has to be loaded partially from the cartridge. Uh, so I think it's like a two to three minute difference across the whole run, just between running digital over physical. And there's yeah. a bad digital version as well, right? Because the, your game can be on the Switch memory, which is mm -hmm. the fastest one, but it could also be on an, an SD card that you can use on your Switch. If yeah. you put the game on your SD, it's going to be as low as well. Yeah, you, you always want to make sure to uh, move the game data to the system memory, uh, because it will eliminate that extra, well, hurdle, I want to say, when loading game files. Yeah, so the run that I did two days ago, uh, it was on my SD card, the game. So I finished at 4 hours and 35 seconds, so I, I, I can consider that 4 hours. I think you can count that as a sub 4. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, yeah, I know that uh, some of the other runners that have run physical in the past um, have definitely seen very quick improvements um, when they switch to digital. Uh, but I think, yeah, when you're starting out, you know, two or three minutes is not a huge deal. So there's no real, it's not imperative to, you know, buy the game on you know, digital right away. But if you are going to be going for the very, you know, top, top times, then uh, typically digital is recommended. Yeah. Um, another thing, like for beginners that are starting, like we have um, the beginner notes, which make your game like super easy and safe to throughout to play it. Um, but as you go on and you get more experienced, uh, Getting excellent on all the Pokemons that you catch, or most of them, avoiding breakouts, and knowing and adapting well on what to catch and when to catch, makes a huge difference on your time. Uh, you can save tons of time just by doing that. And avoid, of course, practicing movement, avoiding hitting optionals, and so on. It is a, peri a pretty easy game to, to learn and to start with. Um, 
but I, and as you go on, you're getting very uh, better and better. You can be start reducing your times m more and more. Yeah, do you plan to continue running this game, Vu, and getting down your time? Probably. Uh, so I did have pause, a very long pause on speedrunning. The last time that I ran was Sword and Shield. Um, I did like the trade out mains, both uh, Starmy and Sylvia. I created mm -hmm. the routes, but got my time spotted because like people got better uh, routes than mine. Mm -hmm. I'm probably like starting uh, to keep going with Let's Go. I'm still getting used to the meshing. Um, meshing yeah. is like when you're meshing, like as you use the Joy Cons, you can you probably don't use like the the um, Pro Controller and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. The my, the meshing is like a little bit different for me, so I'm still getting used to it. But I'll probably do a few more runs and record those for sure. Yeah, with the meshing, it's. Uh... There is you can use turbo controllers, um, but most people don't have turbo Joy Cons, uh, so it's not the most common you know, for this game. Whereas uh, for other Pokemon games where you can use a pro style controller uh, with turbo, um, it's a little bit more uh, you know just widespread. So this game does require you to be often people will be holding down a button and mashing two to three other buttons and doing this just constantly throughout all the text to get the things as quick as possible and um, it might I don't know at least to me at first it seemed excessive but I could definitely tell even switching from mashing like one button to two buttons or two buttons to three buttons that like it was making a, a difference over the course of the run yeah, so what I did was basically was just holding B and meshing A. Sometimes I was meshing L as well, but mm -hmm. like the basics, basics, basic, basic meshing technique that I could get was this. All right. So, so Jay Petals yeah. is coming into a very interesting fight, right? Our Archer 2. Yes. The other two fights, known as the worst fight in the game, actually saved for it too, which is, I think is interesting. Uh, maybe running low on healing items if it uh, goes for that save. Uh, this fight is bad. Uh, <laughs> it's a true double battle, because, uh, which just means that you only control one Pokemon on your side of the field, and uh, the other three slots are controlled by one AI trainer each. And this is too much for the game to handle. So you're going to be seeing like 10 seconds of lag every turn. Yeah, and all you can do is psychic. Uh, there is a priority to which mons you take down for others. Like you want to take out the mug first thing. If the electrode is still out, that's your next target. And then basically just leave the radicate on the field go for everything that Archer sends out. The Radicate is pretty annoying because it knows Sucker Punch, which is super effective damage to you. So, uh, gotta be mindful of that. Hmm. Unfortunately, you keep on missing that Bone Meringue, which would have, you know, well, it still could be the same amount of turns, but uh, it's yeah. nice if Trace and his Cubone can actually contribute some things. Yeah, you really are relying on the rival to do a good job here. Ideally, you just want to see him go for Bomberang spam on everything, because that's his highest damaging move. Since he has inexplicably chosen to not evolve his level 36 Cubone yet. Um, oh well. If he goes for energy fo uh, yeah, energy focus or headbutt, that's not going to really help you. Because it does less than half to eradicate headbutt, that is. And of course, energy focus is nothing. Missed Bone Meringue twice, which either one of those probably would have knocked out the eradicate. Um, meanwhile, on Sheep's side, got uh, self-destruct, no protect, which is typically the best option for turn one. So still has the three-turn fight in play. 
Yeah, that's the best thing that you can get. The three turn. It definitely requires the Cubone uh, to cooperate, which so far is looking good. Uh, four turn is, I, I, I guess, the most common thing you get uh, from either being on three turn pace and the Cubone not cooperating, or just getting one of the other openings and then uh, being able to close out the fight in four turns. Yeah, there we go. Going. Got the three turn. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and as you were saying, with the lag of the AI and um, just managing all the different Pokemon on the field, uh, saving one turn on that fight does make a big difference. All right. Looks like sheep has evolved his coughing into Weezing, so really only needs the two gift Pokemon that you can get after defeating Giovanni in here. Uh, JTL still has that one Evo to go, but will probably also hit it on this Jason James fight. Yeah, luckily, um, or I guess unlike the previous Jesse and James fights, this one is uh, very simple. You can one-shot everything without having to even set up. Um, thanks to our overleveled Starmie, uh, not as scary as the previous two fights uh, where we were using an underleveled EV. Yeah, this fight can still be a, a little annoying if this Weezing doesn't go for Dodrio. Uh, basically, always uses Thunderbolt if you have Dodrio here, either on the Dodrio or on Starmie. Uh, if it just hits the Starmie and nothing else happens, you can use Dodrio's second turn to heal back to full. But you can also get paralyzed from Thunderbolt, and of course you can also get crit, so... It can be annoying, this fight, but it's definitely not dangerous compared to Jason James 2 and 3. Um, and as you mentioned with about JTL saving before the Archer fight, uh, he did use his last Super Potion on the Archer fight, so... Ah, okay. Uh, it is the next thing that he didn't take damage during this fight. Yeah, that's definitely important then. All right, now entering Giovanni 2. Very straightforward fight. Again, you set up an X special attack and then scored everything. We are still pretty overleveled uh, in this part of the run. So Giovanni's team doesn't really pose much of a challenge. You do want to see fake out turn one from the Persian because getting slash may put you into an awkward... Oh no, keep getting paralyzed on j, &J. Uh, Getting crit from Slash could put you in an awkward HP situation for Sabrina. Okay, so Sheep opted to heal HP here and keep the paralysis, so he will have to do an extra menu to get rid of that. Since you don't want to be paralyzed for the Geo fight. Could have theoretically opted to heal the paralysis in battle and then keep the health. Yeah, I think that's probably what I would have opted for, just to make sure you don't get paralyze that turn yeah because what you can do if you are have taken some damage uh you can skip the x speed in on sabrina's fight and instead just heal twice basically heal once to stall the extra turn and also to get back to good health uh and then heal again after getting hit by alakazam potentially But I think ideally that also wouldn't be necessary. So if you just heal, yeah. you have happy potions at that point, you could heal to full. You would have to heal after the battle anyway. I think that's just the best thing you can do. All right, J Tattles picked up the Master Ball, making his way, gonna be picking up the two gift Pokemon so that to reach that 50, and then likely taking the shopping trip before heading into Sabrina's gym. Yes, that will be the final shop of the run. Uh, runners will be stocking up on X items that they will need for the rest of the run, uh, including anywhere between 31 and 99 X special attacks. Yes. 
Uh, and also, you know, healing items, uh, X special defense, potentially X speed. Yeah, the shopping chip does give us, uh, can give us a little bit of info on what they're thinking about uh, doing late game. Uh, for instance, if they buy the X defend, they might be opting to one control or the uh, last gym fight. Uh, whereas if they don't buy it, then they're probably going to two controller it. And the same thing for the X special defense can indicate what they're going to do in the Elite Four. Yeah. I usually, like in my first race at least, I opted to skip the X defense and mm -hmm. the X special defense because I knew that I was going to go for safe stats anyway. But I think, like, this is again just for my own personal strategy. Uh, I think for tomorrow's race, I will probably only skip the X defense. I don't see a world where I risk one C Giovanni. I mean, it could get very close, but the thing with the Pikachu route is that you buy the X, X defense on the pewter shop. So uh, either I switch up the Saffron shop and buy the X defense then, or I just won't go for one C Geo. It doesn't lose too much time. And one C Geo, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a risk you take. Getting Earthquake, crit, be really unfortunate. Okay, definitely X special defense here on j Tuttle's side. Don't know if he ran for the X defense. Uh, looks like... Okay, looking for full heals here. Yeah. Not gonna buy the X defense, so... Um, more than likely going to two controller Giovanni, which, uh, as you were saying, is... Uh, Totally reasonable race strat. Uh, it makes the fight uh, basically free uh, because yeah. you can easily be crit by Earthquake on the one controller fight, but cannot on the two controller fight. And for the purpose of the tournament, they are on a very good pace to beat uh, the time that even the second place needs to hit in order to classify. So, unless the, the other ra lower bracket races like People pull out like very good times. It should be good to go. Well, I did pre predict cheap to qualify on time, <laughs> so I hope that comes through <laughs> for the sake of my yeah. pickups. But uh, <laughs> obviously, we just want to see a good race here, and we've definitely gotten that so far. And. It is still like anyone's game uh, on this race, still. Uh, they are super close together. There's a few things that can go wrong. We don't need to mention them. Uh, just for now. Right? We <laughs> yes, don't want to jinx anything. Yes, first, like, hit heavily on the run that I was commentating. Poor Razor. Hmm. Wow. j has 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 reached Sabrina, uh, cheap now entering the gym puzzle. That's just teleporters. You want to hit these teleporters in the center because otherwise there will be a lengthy animation where the game basically forces you into the center so that the teleporting animation can play properly. Um, so if you just hit the center by yourself, uh, you can skip that animation. And as j starts the fight, um, yep, getting turn one light screen, which is the kind of uh, most common outcome. Uh, so just going to set up in the meantime and stall a little bit. Uh, well, two shot the Mr. Mime, and then by the time you KO the Mr. Mime, uh, the light screen will have worn off. That's the crit here, so we'll have to st stall another turn on that exam or go for the Hydro Pump. But... Uh... Probably gonna choose to heal. Yeah. Yeah, he did get a special defense drop, so um, yeah, that psychic did do a fair amount of damage. Yeah, crit would have killed there, so probably the best choice not to risk the pump. Yeah. All right. Let's see what she gets. That screen turn one is definitely oh, the most. Yeah, I was realizing what? he forgot to teach Thunderbolt. Oh no! Oh, oh no. No. no! Oh, gets yawned. Oh no! 
That's not. I mean, it's time lost. Yeah. But it's gonna know. waste a turn. I don't know what. Too much. Yeah. Okay. It's not the end of the world, but it, it is quite a big time loss, and will allow sheep to catch back up. I was about to say something like, and this is the first Thunderbolt usage of a run that we need to worry about, but, uh, uh -huh. um, yeah. Okay, well, summoning the Dodrio here to just get through this in one turn, using an Awakening. Alright, there we go. Made it through the fight with a little bit of time loss. And obviously, we'll still have to teach Thunderbolt here. Right. So, basically neck and neck, considering that um, the TM teaching. Yeah. Koga's Gym will be a pivotal moment here. There's so much RNG that can really ruin your day. So, if one of these runners gets a much cleaner Koga Gym than the other, uh, we could see some separation happening here. But as it stands right now, like you said, Gavin, they're neck and neck. You now finished with Sabrina, J titles depositing everything that he no longer needs, which is everything but Starmie and Rapidash. Has to heal right back up again. Hopefully we'll remember, there we go, to teach Thunderbolt. You can... I, I don't know if he maybe did this on purpose. Like... He ran out of the super potions, which makes me think he could potentially have intended to keep the recover to heal up in battle. But obviously then forgetting to teach Thunderbolt before going into Sabrina is unfortunate. All right. Yeah, and now next level Keisha. strats if he had actually <laughs> played in that, to be honest. Wait. Oh, what? But did Cheap just not want to use a Hyper Potion, or did he not have them? I assume he just... I assume because he moved the Super Potions down to that slot, but he yeah. probably has them and just was trying to conserve. Okay. 126 special attack here. Probably is going to have some ranges if he wants to go for Scald on Koga. Let's check. Uh... 126. Yeah, that's the 12 and 16 range on oh, Weezing. 14 and 16 on Venomoth. Also goes for late teeth. Okay, I see. Moment of truth now for both runners. Do they have 50 Pokemon? <laughs> All right, Jake Nettles has it. Nice. Sheep 2. All right, cool. So now the pressure of the catch count is done for the run, and for the last uh, 30, 40 minutes, they can just focus on uh, the battling. Uh, and Speaking of battling. Fun one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is like the worst just random trainer fight <laughs> of the run. Caden can really ruin your day. You definitely want to see him go for psychic, uh, excuse me, protect someone. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Jet Titles gets the good Caden. Yes, everything in this gym knows protect and... Minimize, no! Oh, that's the worst thing. Uh, hopefully it can hit Okay, it hits the psychic, there we go. Okay. Uh, but apparently she forgot to swap the X specials into the last slot, so we'll always have to use three inputs to get to them. Uh, not ideal. Might want to do that on the menu after Koga. Alright. Jetel's making his way through the gym about to challenge Koga himself, who is way less of a problem than Caden. All Koga can do is stall you out with using protect on literally every single Pokemon that he has. Uh, as you mentioned, Sheep now moving those like specials. Yeah, okay, there we go. I probably would have like, waited till after Koga, but it makes sense to just get it done, not forget it again. 
Uh, and yeah, I've actually seen Koga go for double protect and get away with it once, which is very annoying. Yeah, I believe I've seen that one time too, and it's uh, not fun, especially when psychics are, uh, you know, having yeah. psychic PT gets it gets pretty tight, um, especially if you get a lot of protects. So having as few protects as possible is definitely ideal. I feel like I feel like Jet Hurdles could definitely just go for Scald on this Venomoth. Probably, yeah. Didn't see his uh, 49 special attack stat, but if she had 126, then I feel like Jet Hurdles probably had like 130. See, she'd get in the Toxic turn one, and then the Protect. So, no harm done, just an extra wasted turn. All right, J Tattles through. Neither of the runners got a particularly bad Koga gym here, which is definitely good. The minimize was a little worrying on Caden, but uh, yeah, she just hit it at the psychic turn too. So really no difference to getting protect turn one. So, Jay Shadow's now gonna pick up Strong Push. Did he get the teeth? I don't know. Jay Shadow's okay, got it. it, Sheep not. Okay. Yeah. Guess he would have uh, found out now <laughs> if he hadn't picked them up. Yeah. That's pretty punishing because you would have to go all the way around or fly to the Pokemon Center. Right. Yeah. Sheep does remember, so all fine. Does look like the runners are about a minute apart here. Even with the small Sabrina mishap for J Tattles. So now we'll be going through basically cutscenes oh. <laughs> until uh, they can finally get into the last gym, uh, which has some interesting fights in its own uh, that you can, one in particular that you can be risky or uh, play it safe. I imagine the runners will probably play it safe. Um, but yeah, not too much going on until they actually get into the first fight. Yeah, she's still just now going to do the menu that Jade Hattles already completed. Ah, uh, okay, just flying. Um, yeah, he did do the Max Repel on his, before his flight to Fuchsia. I see, okay. And has he already elixir Or is he going to do... He did that after Caden. Right, okay. Makes so, sense, man. Just flying. Yeah, did things in okay. an unusual order, but got everything he needed. Good, good, good. You don't want to see encounters on round one. <laughs> yeah. Got enough of that at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, since uh, the catching portion is done, we'll just be max repelling throughout the rest of the game uh, just to make sure there's no nonsense with encounters uh, either on route one or on Victory Road. So Jet Huddle's now entering Giovanni's gym. Uh, there is an option for time save here. <laughs> uh, well, the first one is very small. If you have good enough stats, you can go for Psychic on the Rhyhorn in the first trainer fight here. Sheep, I believe, barely makes the cut. Yes, can go for Psychic with 126 special attack. Uh, that is guaranteed. You can also go for it with lower special attack, but it just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense to risk a range on just a random gym trainer fight. Speaking of missing things, though, uh, 
right after this, Itadel's gonna be fighting Ace Chainer Samuel, which who has a Nether King. That Nether King knows Megahorn. And you can go with it with one controller and use Hydro Pump on it, which just makes it a one turn fight. But Hydro Pump, of course, only 80% accurate. Yeah, and J. Tetris is not even gonna go for it. Uh, and if you miss it, that Megahorn will just nuke Starmie. Like, J. Tetris Starmie is probably bulky enough that it would survive uh, a Megahorn, but. It's, it's not the best thing to do in a race, I would say. <laughs> so. Yeah, and even if you survive the Megahorn, um, he was going for the Psychic Stomp, which I thought he might with his high special attack. Yeah. Um, yeah, just hit the Psychic, didn't even need the Stomp. Yeah. Um, that only works at really good special attack, though. Yeah. Uh, even if you, you know, get a Megahorn, uh, you know, survive the Megahorn and hit the second Hydro Pump, you still have to mend you and heal uh, yeah. before Giovanni. So it is very punishing if you don't hit the Hydro Pump on the first try. Yeah, that's one of those risky strats that you can go for if you really need to make up some time. Uh, the sheep already summoned the second controller here, so we'll go for the 2C strat as well. And outside of that, it will just be a lot of Scald to finish out the gym. Yeah. I believe neither of the runners went for the X defense, so yeah. Uh, J Tattle's just summoning the second controller for the safe Giovanni strat. Well, he just sent out the Rapidash alongside of um, the Starmie. Ductrio will use Earthquake, and since it's a spread move and hits both of your Pokemon in one turn, it will have its damage reduced. Thus, allowing Starmie to just tank the hit, have a safe setup in the same turn, and also just get to knock out the Dodrio in the same uh, the Dactrio, excuse me in the same turn. It's very nice, but just because the Rapidash should die here, it can hang on uh, if it has very high defense or just gets the power of love. Um, doesn't though in J Turtle's case. But even though this is now a 1v1, because you entered the fight with two controllers, you're still going to have a little bit of double battle lag that you wouldn't have if you started the one, uh, if you started the fight with one controller and never summoned the second one. Yeah, kind of similar to the status lag, the two-player lag can... Um, it's a bit random that sometime, on some turns it'll be instant, just as if you were doing a one-controller fight, and on other turns you'll see multiple camera angles and panning before it decides to actually do the move that you entered. Yeah. The other downside to the safety strat is that you always have to menu after with 1C. Uh, depending on how bulky your stami is, you may be able to just go into the next fight without healing, without entering the menu at all. But you have to revive the Rapidash because the next fight will also be a 2C fight. So... Um... We'll have to heal. Unless the Rapidash survives, of course, but it doesn't for sheep either. So that's good. Because if it survives, you're going to have to keep doing inputs throughout the entire Giovanni fight, but that allows you to heal in battle at least. Uh, so you don't have to menu after the fight. I don't see. I don't think we saw Power of Love acting this race yet, right? Not yet, I think, yeah. No. It can happen in the later portion of the EV part, so you could theoretically see Power of Love happen on, on maybe Jesse and James 3 in Pokemon Tower. Didn't see it there, uh, and then Starmie, Starmie itself will only enter that range during the Elite Four. Uh, but the Rapidash can get it here on this fight already, because... Uh, Power of Love depends on friendship, and the Pokemon that you select as your right Pokemon will get increased friendship. So uh, just over time, we'll, we'll, we'll raise the friendship stats. So that is why Rapidash is already getting, potentially getting Power of Love at this point, even though you basically caught it just before you caught the Starmie. All right, so. 
J Turtles now entering the rival five fights. Yes, and I was looking at both their level ups at level 50. It doesn't seem like either of them will be able to outspeed the Raichu naturally, so we'll have to set up an X speed, um, but uh, that's not a big deal. Uh, otherwise, you would just be stomping on that turn or using having an extra healing turn. Yeah, it's slightly faster not to have to go into the bag, but uh, like I said, it's not, it's not required or anything. Uh... And it's also not dangerous, like not outspeeding the Rapidash or the Ninetales in Lane's gym could be. All right. Keep now also approaching the fight. Yeah, so I, for this fight, uh, the rival fight, the only thing that we want to keep in mind is the order where you use the DX items, because we do not want to see Raichu coming out second, because we do need to outspeed it, and in order to outspeed it, we need to um, use an X an speed, but we also need an X special attack as well, so if we don't get the order of the X items correct, we mix those, we may see Raichu, Raichu coming out second and we'll make uh, the fight way harder, right? Uh, no, uh, the, what, not quite at least, uh, the order in which the enemy Pokemon are sent out are, is only dependent on the type of the Pokemon that you have on your field. So with the Rapidash as your partner Pokemon, Raichu will only ever come out third or fourth. But if you don't use the X speed in turn two, if Raichu comes out in turn three, the X speed will not actually have taken effect because X speed only applies in the following turn, not in the same turn because of the way that speed calculations work in this game. Yeah, so you're not in danger of it coming out second, but uh, it's very imperative that you use the X speed on turn two, no matter what comes out. I believe this was an issue, like, Raichu potentially coming out second was an issue with the uh, Kabutops route. I'm not quite mm, sure. That makes sense. It's an older route. Uh, used to be the main. But yeah, with just Sami and Rapidash, like I said, uh, you either get the Marowak, which has super effective moves against the Rapidash, or you get the uh, what is it? Vileplume. Vileplume, yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I blanked, I was blanking on the name there for a second. <laughs> I still have basically 300 names just for Kanto <laughs> in my yeah, head. Yeah, I, I was thinking of that. Do you still just have the German ones come to mind first and you have to th think of what the other ones are? For some of them, like, uh, I mean, some of them are easy because Starmie is literally just Starmie in German as well. <laughs> but uh, for a Pokemon that we use a lot in the speedrun, like Rapidash, over time, like I've been running this game for a year now, uh, the English version has definitely been the one that my brain goes to first. Yeah. But with stuff like, yeah, the Valplume that sure is an enemy Pokemon on some important boss battles, but we don't use that, and it's not like super pivotal to the run. So sometimes I still blank on it, even after a year <laughs> of mostly playing Pokemon games in English. Yeah, I don't have this problem, like because there has been many, many, many years that Pokemon doesn't release uh, a Pokemon game with Portuguese translations. Yeah, same for me. I think they started uh, offering the language change in game with Pokemon X and Y. So for my entire childhood, basically, there was only one way to play Pokemon and it wasn't German. So I couldn't even choose to play it in Eng English. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, JTL has just defeated Naomi, another major roadblock here in, in, in Victory Road. Uh, using the two controller strat, definitely recommended because however rough, Samuel can get if you go for the 1C, Naomi is 10 times worse. 
because you have you always have to set up an X special attack. You have to tank one attack from this Kangaskhan. This Kangaskhan has Crunch, which is super effective against Starmie. And it will usually do more than half your health. On top of that, it also has Sucker Punch. So if it goes for Sucker Punch turn two, even if you hit that would have hit the Hydro Pump, you just don't even get to move. You just die right then and there. Uh, so this fight is super dangerous to do with one controller. Yeah, and luckily she hit the Hydro Pump, and I believe J Tattles missed the pump, but it went. But the Kangaskhan went for Outrage, so I uh, was not in any danger. Yeah, with two controller, it's super safe because uh, you can just Hydro Pump turn one. So ideally, the Kangaskhan doesn't even get to move. But uh, if you miss the pump, you still have to tank at least one attack there. But it can. Like it just did go for something that isn't crunch because it maybe was targeting the rapid dash instead. That just makes the fight so much safer, even though it's slower, of course, than the optimal 1C Naomi fight. It was just finishing up the second trainer here in Victory Road, uh, Jacqueline Nelson, who has a hypno, which can get very annoying because it knows hypnosis. And uh, I believe slow bro. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty easy for us to take care of just with a Thunderbolt uh, sheep now going into the fight. I believe j was actually got put to sleep by Hypnosis mm -hmm. on the fight. So sheep could catch up a little bit here if he doesn't get it. Yeah, Hypno goes ahead, but here does get another chance to hit. Yeah, oh, never mind. There, there comes the hypnosis. Hypnosis is only 75% accurate, so it can also miss. So seeing it hit twice here, really unfortunate for the runners. Is it it's 75 in this game? I believe so. Okay. I know in some other gens it's only 60, um, so I wasn't sure about But I know also moves, it's accuracies and powers are some, a little bit different in Let's Go compared to other games. All right, final skip of the run for j -Tiles. Perfect. That was excellent execution of the Alexa skip. Didn't even hesitate. Now fighting Caroline, in my opinion, even worse than Naomi in some <laughs> ways. Like, not nearly as dangerous uh, when it comes to killing you, but it can lose you so much time if this fight goes poorly. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's... Not the most dangerous. It's just uh, time waste. They receive getting put to sleep. You know that requires healing. You can get frozen, status lag. Um, you can miss your hydro pumps. Yeah, and if you have bad special attack, hydro pump on this jinx can be a range at plus two. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we've seen some. We've seen one or I think two very very bad Carolines this round already. Both for, I believe, T-Pad and Headstrong in the upper bracket. That's some really bad Alex uh, sorry, Caroline fights here. Uh, you, so you just want to see that Hydro Pump connect on the first try. And Sheep now going to go for their Alexa skip. Perfect. Goes for a little bit more of, an, of, a, of a cautious approach there, but it definitely pays off. Alexa has three Pokemon. Uh, it's a pretty slow optional to hit, so... Uh... Yeah, and those three Pokemon, because you were using Psychics on them, that does kind of mess up your PP and uh, requires you to use some way to heal to re replenish that. Ideally, if you don't take damage from Caroline, you should be able to just go into the fourth and final fight, the infamous Pokemaniac Dawson. Yes, most known, well known for not fighting him, uh, for being skipped. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he does have a Lickit Song, which can hit pretty hard with Power Whip if that lands. Um, other than that, it's. Uh, but if you're at fine HP, you are all set to go on and then head on to the Elite Four. You have to keep in mind that uh, Dawson has a Blastoise that knows Aqua Jet. So even if you hang on in like low red HP, 
you're still at risk of dying here. So you really want to make sure that your HP is good enough to survive that, but definitely is the case for J titles here. Almost at full health. It still tanks the power away pretty well, so we'll still have to probably heal before Lorelei, um, but not in danger on this fight. Yeah, should heal before Lorelei at this HP. If the power whip had missed, uh, I think he could have not healed, because I think he can afford to only set up to plus four. So with two waterfalls tanked from. Uh, Lorelai's lead Pokemon that should still should have been fine for Bruno, but with the power of connecting, definitely should heal now. Let's see if yeah, picks up the full restore. Uh, you can skip this if you intend on going for a 2C safety strat on Agatha. But picking it up here definitely indicates that J Turtles will, will not be going for that. Sheep now on Dawson. I'm not sure if his Starmie is good enough to go for Scald here. Let's go for Scald. Okay, good. Yeah, judging by what is... I didn't see his level 51 uh, stats, but judging by his 50, level 50 stats, he's probably at about 135 special attack. Yeah. So, just estimating j I, th I think should be on like a 311 pace right now. I'm gonna see where Sheep stands when he leaves. Should be like a 314 maybe? So very much right around Pokegeist time, who currently has the fastest. Yeah, and if he could land the, the fastest, you know, uh, runner up time, that would be uh, a nice buffer to have that, you know, uh, essentially two people would have to be this time to be knocked out. And that's actually not possible because there's only one lower bracket race left yeah, after. Perfect. <laughs> so uh, if, he, if he beats Poker Guy here, if he beats the 31404, then uh, she is locked into the next round. Yeah, I think it's going to be close. Uh, usually, um, yeah. it takes 14, 15 minutes for the Elite Four, I believe. With safety strats, yes. Uh, which I think both runners will go for, but I guess we'll see when we get to lands. Um, I know she, uh, I'm pretty sure, did not buy special oh. defense, so we'll definitely be too controlling okay, those fights. Yeah. Also, puts in Dodrio here. So probably going to 2-control or Agatha. Might go for that. Not necessarily. It also makes the champ fight uh, a little more consistent with the backup strat. Yeah, fair. I guess we'll see. So the first two fights on Elite 4, they are very... Uh, they are, like, fine um there are, there are there aren't many things that can could go wrong there are stats that you could save time right but there are not strats that you could lose time or at least die on these fights right well you can definitely die on these fights uh if things go extremely wrong but they are much safer than the three remaining fights after so uh Depending on how good the special attack of your star is, you can just set up to plus four on Lorelei and set up to plus six, which then means you have to hit some ranges, including a Scald range on the Jinx. And since it's a Jinx, you know, it can put you to sleep, it can deal some damage, uh, which since you already tanked a couple of waterfalls, can become pretty dangerous. Oh, yeah, she's just taking care of that, no problem. And then, of course, for Bruno, depending on how that goes, there is always one risk that we're not going to talk about right now. <laughs> uh, 
never happened, right? If it is just a myth. Happened. Okay. It is a myth. Yes. It's not real. It can't hurt us. Um anyway, Jet Tattles has excellent HP for this fight, so doesn't have to worry about anything. Can just use psychic for everything. And she's just now finishing Lorelei, so we'll be entering Bruno as well. Since I actually didn't catch if Jade Huddles deposited, I don't believe he did. So since you start out with a second Pokemon in your party, the Onyx on Bruno is pretty likely to go for Stealth Rocks instead of uh, Earthquake, which it would usually use if you go in with only one Pokemon in your party. Yeah. So you don't even take that extra damage from Earthquake, uh, which is pretty nice because it makes the fight even safer. Yeah, and J-Tails did get the Stealth Rock um, because of that back backup Pokemon, and I assume she probably will as well. Yes. yes. I have seen it go for Earthquake uh, with a Pokemon in my back, though. Uh, so it's not guaranteed, it's just very likely. Okay, right. J-Tails is going for the save here before Agatha. And yeah, looks like going for the 1C. Which I, that's also my preference. I like to do one see Agatha, but you see, uh, I think Agatha usually is pretty safe. My one, my turn, my round one Agatha actually wasn't all that safe, but I managed to close it out still. And it usually doesn't go worse than what I got, where I got uh, Crunch defense drop turn one mm. or turn two after that the glare. Uh, even if you get Crunch turn one. There is a clear path into winning the fight from there. Obviously, it's not 100% safe, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I've uh, never gone in with the intention of two controlling, but I definitely have pulled out the rapid you're... action in case of emergency. <laughs> yeah, if your star is very fragile, I can definitely see it because that Arbok Crunch can deal a lot of damage. And you could also just be at risk of the Golbat quick attack a lot faster. But Jay Tattles Starmie is very bulky, so does not have to be afraid at all, really. Uh, and seems to have gotten a pretty good fight here. Yeah. And we will see the alternate strat on the other side where Sheep J did uh Sheep did um summon the second controller to start the fight. So you can just go for the attack here, turn one, if you do 2C, because you can, again, use the expression attack on the other uh, Pokemon out on the field, so you don't even have to take any hits from Arbok or get the glare, you know? And you can also choose to buff up to plus four here and start scolding things, which uh, saves a turnaround or two, so that's also neat. Though I guess you do get a turnaround for using an extra X item here. All right, J Tattles healing up for Lance, making sure to use that max elixir. And still could two controller this. Typically, if you're going to two controller Lance, you bring out the partner Pokemon on the second turn. Um, so. We don't really know yeah. yet what he's planning. Depending on how uh, the setup goes, you could even consider delaying sending out the second Pokemon, especially if we see a miss turn one, or if uh, Seedra goes for Hyper Beam, because then you know that you're going to get one free turn after anyway. Yeah, like this. Looks like he's going to one control it. The X special defense? Mm hmm. Okay. That's exciting. Did he save before Lance? I hope so. Because this is risky. Okay, we'll now have to set up to plus six, though, if he's going to want to see. Can't set up later. Yeah, there we go. All right, no crits. Can't even heal here now, but doesn't choose to. Okay. If uh, Cedra goes for a hyper beam on the last turn of setup, you know that it's going to recharge next turn, so you can just heal in battle. Then you don't have to go into the menu for 
champ at all. Unless you want to save, of course, which could very well be something that J Turtles has in mind. And I don't know the special attack here for J Turtles star, but I'm pretty sure that he won't have a range. There we go. We want to see the level 53 stat. Yeah, 147. Uh, yeah. It's very much guaranteed that the Dragonite will die to Psychic. I think Sheep will be at about 140. Uh-oh. Uh oh. It seems like... Okay. Don't know what happened there, why Sheep attacked without being able to knock out the Seedra. Was now gonna call on the second controller. But yeah, J Tales is on an excellent pace right now. Uh, just one fight left to go. Fastest time in our bracket right now is a 3.11.25 by Spider C. Might have a chance to beat that here. Which is nice because the fastest three the fastest three uh, runners that win in the lower bracket will uh, get placed into pot two for the round three draw, thus being able to dodge runners like uh, Kid Rocker from the upper bracket. Let's see, sheep special attack. 141. Ah, uh, also guaranteed. We'll have to see it. So, so J Tiles is hopefully he's going for the extra safe to uh, two controller because set up the X special defend just in case Pidgeot air slashes. Yeah, usually you would go for X speed X special attack turn one because this is what usually happens. <laughs> yeah. Rapidash gets hit, uh, and now. Uh, Pidgeot should just go for a quick attack on Rapidash and take it out for you. You can just buff up all the way if you want, and then, yeah, there we go. Take out the Pidgeot next turn. And it should be smooth sailing from here for Jet Headless. Just select the correct moves. Yep, just psychic everything except the Slowbro, and it should yes. be all good. I assume he does not have a range on the Marowak. Oh, no, definitely not. You have to have, <laughs> like, zero to two... IV special attack or something to have range there. And if your name's not T-Pad or Triff, <laughs> then it's not gonna happen to you. Alright. Sheep also, yeah, Sheep also going into Ravana, into Champ now, excuse me, so also on a very good pace here. Yeah, this is how it's kind of been uh, the vast majority of the run. It's just uh, yeah. very close. Um, they've been synced up a few times, albeit with slightly different catch counts throughout, but it's been a tight one throughout, and uh, yes. Chase Haddles has managed to hang on just with a slight lead for uh, the last hour or two. Yeah, really interesting that both runners were able to get to this pace pretty decisively and also like they didn't make any mistakes they didn't have any bad rng they just kept at it really solid run out of both of, both of them i'm really impressed they're going to be a force to be re reckoned with in the round three races yeah and even Curious, uh, reminding us that sheep is on physical. So uh, even, you know, if he had the digital, might be have that just a little extra edge on this race. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, looks like a three eleven time here. Probably won't beat Spider, but uh, is will be guaranteed. Part two. 
since there's only one more race to go after this in the lower bracket, so uh, you will be really happy with this. Excited. And obviously for sheep. Yeah. In race time, we've got let's click finish with a 311 on screen. We've got 37 on race time. We got 38, but regardless, uh, a great time uh, for J titles. Yeah, just J titles. Like considering that everything that happened, like leaving Mount Moon not level 15, not having a very hard, and everything else, it was an amazing run. Yeah. Absolutely, not having a Rhyhorn, that is, makes this time even more impressive. So I'm interested to hear what he has to say about the run. Uh, if he will join us in a minute. Meanwhile, Sheep just finishing off the last Pokemon here, I believe. Yeah, unfortunately, did not get uh, the Dodrio knocked out, uh, which you would prefer to see, but uh, still this happy to fight still... safely. Yeah, this would still be a good 30 seconds faster than Poker Guy's time, so a huge GG to Sheep qualifying for round three with an amazing PB2. So, yes. Very interested to hear what he has to say about his run as well. Gonna mash through the last couple of text boxes here, get the Pokemon registered in the Hall of Fame. And has now finished the race on race time with a 313.39. Huge GG nice. to Sheep. Amazing run, truly. So. Looks like we are joined by Jay Tavels right now. Hello. Hey. Hello. GG. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And GG to Sheep, that's a fantastic time. I believe Sheep will also join us shortly. It's going to take a quick break before joining. Uh, so until he gets here, tell us about the run. Uh, oh, man. Uh, well, pretty much like my first round race, my first half of the run was really scuffed. Like. It was. It felt like I, the game was just like fighting against me for like the first hour or so, um, with like I had that the very first rival fight. I got paralyzed turn one and then kept like not hitting, so it turned into like a seven turn fight or something like that. The very mm. first rival fight, and then like I don't even. I'd have to. I'm gonna have to watch it back because I don't even. There's so much happened, but I I yeah. got to a point where I was like kind of paranoid, so I like picked up the Ultra Balls and hide out because I just felt like things were just going to go wrong. Um, yeah. And thankfully, it, things kind of worked out. Um, but Sheep really kept me on my toes that whole time. I was I kept checking in, and uh, and we were so close yeah. the entire race. And it was, Absolutely. And it was a little bit stressful. So, But I, I quit looking when we, right when we got to, um, right when we got to um, the league. So I don't know how their league went, but but they they had me stressed out the whole time. <laughs> he was going for a couple of more safety stress than you did, but uh, definitely neck and neck. Uh, we were saying this all throughout the run. It was incredibly close. So uh, yeah, was there a point in the run where you felt like it was turning around? You just said that you had that rough early game. At what point did you were you able um... to regain your confidence a bit, maybe? I feel I I feel like it was probably when I got my Starmie, maybe because that it was a it was a good Starmie, um, but I still felt like even even with that I still felt like Sheep was so close behind me that it was really hard to um, to to even relax for a second or feel like I had the game back in my hands for a second. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It, I'm, uh, it was a great race though, really a great race. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, but with the time that you got in this race, which, uh, what was it again? 3.11.38, you are yeah. uh, safe in pot two for round three. So fantastic. <laughs> you'll get to dodge runners like Spider and Kid Rocker. 
Uh, but we, me, uh, me and Spider and um, and Joker wanted to have our rematch, but maybe that wow. won't happen yet. I'm afraid that is not going to happen in round three, at least. <laughs> You'll have to, you have to qualify for round four to get the chance. I'm trying to think of things that. Ha- oh yeah, like it, like when I went to Mount Moon and the, uh, and like I saw a Geo dude and a Paris on the first floor, and then I was like, I'll I'll wait, catch them on the bottom floor. I got onto the bottom floor, and there's like 500 Zubats down there. And mm-hmm. one Geo dude, and I just, I just, it got too crazy. I just left, and yeah. I just didn't even catch anything down there. Um, I got the second Moonstone, so that was nice. But it was like just an absurd amount of Zubats were in that bottom room, and then yeah. no Clefairy, um, and then no Rhyhorn either. Um, my my tunnel was really weird because I just wasn't getting. I usually when I do like my own like PV attempt runs, I get things to spawn pretty early on in tunnel. But this time it was just like really spread out. Um, the rare chart kind of saved me a little bit on my catches. But uh, yeah, it was really weird. I've never not I've never continued to run without having a Rhyhorn before, so it was a fun experiment, I guess. Well, it's nice that you could get that experience during a tournament race. Maybe you would have wanted that in a practice run, but uh, yeah, right. Well, worked out in the end. Still got that win. Uh, yeah, it was it was stressful, but it was it was fun still. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Uh, looks like we're now joined by Sheep. Uh, GG Sheep, congratulations on what I think was a pretty huge PB for you. GG Sheep. Uh, GG JT. Uh, yeah. Um... It was a, I, I had a PB yesterday that I didn't really post anywhere or like didn't update yet. Um, but this was a, like a, a two minute, 43 second PB. So nice. I'm happy with that. I, I hit two optionals, which I'm not very happy with. I mean, I, I don't think that would have changed the race, but yeah, that was a, that was a bit of a, a shame. And and I heard you talking about uh, Mount Moon bottom floor. I I had a different Mount Moon bottom floor. <laughs> I also had a lot of Zubats, but it started with a glowing Chansey that spawned there. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so I was um, I think level eighteen leaving Mount Moon, and like level twenty entering um, Cerulean uh, or Familian. So it was like even like like at exiting the tunnel uh, there, like the underground. So my yeah, believe, in the beginning was really high. I believe you were even level twenty three for Ravel on the boat. So yeah, you were yeah after, after the catches, I was level twenty three. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow, I think I was thirteen leaving tunnel, and I had to get two catches on the way to Cerulean. Yeah, exiting that moon. We were a little concerned. <laughs> yeah. I saw so many Clefairy. I, I, I didn't find a Clefairy like within my lure because I had like the Chansey and the Geodude and I was like, okay, I think I'll leave here now uh, because everything else was too bad. And I found a Clefairy later on and then I saw like eight more Clefairies after that. And yeah, I, I, I think I walked into three of them because they just spawned in front of me. Yeah, you are having yeah. some really awkward spawns right in front of your feet. Uh, yeah, I think that tunnel also with two, two or three onyxes. Oh, yeah. It was... Also, uh, both the Radata and the Psyduck on Rod 6, right? Yeah. Um, well, I, I did go for the Psyduck. Uh-huh. Um, and then I went up for a Jigglypuff. And I thought, well, I mean, the, the red catching the red there wasn't like horrible. I could tried to get a Redigate on Route 10. I didn't see one there, but I was like, okay, I'll just catch this. It wasn't like a really bad catch for me. No, not I, at I all. probably wouldn't have gone for it if I just like, if it wasn't like exactly at the same spot as the, as the Jigglypuff, but yeah. Um, my Starmie was pretty good, like just above average. So uh, that, that made things easier. Yeah, you actually both had pretty good stars. Uh, JTLs had a very high CP value. It was like 1140 or something. But wow. uh, I remember it was high. I know my uh, special attack and, and speed were 122, 120 when I taught it um, um, Scald at 46. So whatever, whatever that means. 
<laughs> yeah, it was actually for the CP value, it was surprisingly low special attack. Uh, sheep's wa sheep wasn't very far behind in, in terms of that with like 50 less CP, but yeah. Definitely good stars for both of you. Yeah, mine was like 1080 something. Yeah, 1086. And yeah, it was just like just a just above like my I, I have like in my notes I have like for like 15 AVs the stats and they were like just above for attack and speed, so all right. So, so uh yeah. a, a small question for Jay Tato. So when you were fighting Sabrina, so we okay. were we were in the like we had two you didn't teach teach Thunderbolt just yet and you use recovery instead. Yeah. We <laughs> we don't know if you you forgot about it or if you actually thought about it because you were low on healing items. No, I completely so okay, so the healing items was I had um I had after Blaine I switched um I was healing I had to heal my burn on Starmie and then I uh, used a super potion on it. And then I was in my brain, I was like, okay, I'll switch, go ahead and switch Do Drio to slot two now. And I did it in the healing menu and accidentally used a super potion on, um, mm -hmm. on, uh, Rapidash. Um, so that was a huge oh, no. thing. But then I was like, so like, I don't, I was like so frazzled by the game at this point that I completely forgot to do Thunderbolt. Um, and so I was fighting Sabrina and I, didn't even realize I didn't have it. I just I was just like, oh, Thunderbolt now, and then just push up. I know it's slot four. Just do it, but it wasn't there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I had a little bit of a panic attack. But yeah, I just completely forgot to teach it. <laughs> well, he he recovered from it nicely. Uh, pun intended. Yeah, it, it ended up working. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what matters. <laughs> All right, well, uh, do we have any final words before we wrap things up for now? Um, I think that I'm advancing to the next round on time. Yes. Because yes, I'm absolutely. Fast, you are I'm guaranteed. No guys, so I'm, and only one more race in the lower bracket. So yes. uh, I'll, I'll see you there, uh, Jtops. <laughs> yeah, That's right. Should. We could see a, a rematch, Re rematch in round four. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, before we leave, let's look ahead to our remaining races in this round, uh, because coming up in less than an hour from now, uh, we have our next lower bracket race with uh, Furious versus Phoenix Malier. Uh, now, Fury had the fourth fastest time in the lower bracket in run, round one, so um, it'll be exciting to see if he can make the part one cutoff for round three. Uh, definitely can still compete with that. Would currently, I believe, have to beat Crisis's 31345 for that. Uh, and yeah, that's not even the final race of the day, because just after that, we are going to have our penultimate upper bracket race between Dynam, Headbob, <laughs> and Side J. But Dynam had a bit of a rough run in round one, uh, while Headbob has definitely been trending upwards, just got a 303 PB, that's very exciting. So that race is going to be a banger, uh, if I may say so. And of course... There's one more race to go after that, the final race of round two, which is going to be Wave Warrior versus Trevaria, that's me, <laughs> versus Quo. So uh, from looking at everyone's pickups before the round began, that seemed to be the run where no one could really decide who was going to win it between Wave and, and me, because uh, I believe we are t round one times were like 30 seconds apart. So... Uh, that's going to be an interesting one, and I'm going to play in it, so it's going to be even more interesting. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, I think that's going to be it from us today. Right? Gavin, yeah. who do you uh, have anything else to add? I just want to say, you know, thanks to the runners for a great race, and uh, for you all for co-commentating with me. It's been a great time, and yeah, I'm excited for all these, you know, more action the rest of the day and tomorrow. Yeah, thanks to all the runners that it was a super cool race. Thanks as well, NDGs for a drywall that has a, had a power problem, but uh, nonetheless, awesome participation during the tournament. Thank you, Trivari and Kevin for the comments, and thanks for the Pokemon Speedruns channel for having me.
All right, then. Well, Pokemon Street Trans TV is going to be back in about an hour for that race between Furist and Phoenix Melior. Uh, be sure to come back. Until then, thank you, everyone, so much for watching, and uh, have a great weekend.